Good evening. Welcome. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, August 14th, 2023. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, signed into law on March 29th, 2023, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation in public meetings until March 31st of 2025. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment. Those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. For those people on Zoom who wish to make public comment tonight, we do have an open forum on the agenda, which you can follow along. And during the license and permits, those will be public hearings. So if you want to comment specifically on the licenses and permits, I'll have a public comment period at that time. Uh, everything else uh, will be for open forum. And if you are on Zoom, uh, what we will do when we get to public comment on either of those occasions is that I will announce it. And if you are on Zoom and want to comment, please raise your hand in Zoom. So this would be an excellent time to go Google how to do that if you don't know how. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. First order of business is to welcome a couple of new faces. I believe we have a new town manager in attendance. If you care to introduce yourself and also your sidekick this evening. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, James Feeney, proud new town manager. Thank you for having me. Uh, accompanied this evening by attorney Michael Cunningham. Uh, the town's deputy town council and workers' compensation agent. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Cunningham, uh, for filling in for, uh, for Attorney Heim. Welcome, Mr. Feeney. It is a joy to have you with us tonight as your first in what I hope will be many select board meetings. So, on the consent agenda, we have a number of items. And I will say to my the colleagues, um, there's a couple of, of items here that if you want to discuss them, the town manager is prepared to do so, or I can as well, but we just thought um, putting them on the consent agenda would, might, might uh, make it possible to do, do these on one vote. So I'll re read this now. We have removal of temporary parking restrictions in front of 23 Maple Street, in addition to parking time limitations, 51 Grove Street from the DPW director. A request for a previously approved special one-day beer and wine license, a change of times from Matt Guernsey, uh, Drink Arlington Beer. Um, and those uh, are spilled out uh, in the reservoir events um, on our printed agenda. Request for a special one-day beer and wine license on September 3rd um, at Robbins Town Hall for a private event. Um, actually, we have two of those by Jeffrey O'Connor and Grace Yao. We have a special one-day beer and wine license at David Lamson Way for Town Hall Day, Town Day Beer Garden by Matt Guernsey. Another request for a similar license at Arlington Reservoir for Town Day Road Race Beer Garden. We have a change of location for a Blue Bike Station expansion to Russell Place from Mr. John Alessi, Senior Transportation Planner. Mr. Alessi is present tonight, by the way, if any members do have questions on that. Number nine, on the consent agenda, we have additional parking restrictions to support the electric school bus parking at Audison Middle School, um, submitted by Talia Fox, our sustainability manager. This is a continuation and a follow-up for an, an item that was ex discussed extensively at our last meeting. So with that, I will turn to the board for motions or comments. Mr. Diggins. Uh, so I, I will want to talk about the blue bikes, mainly a question, but on the road race, Reservoir Dogs event. I mean, there was a note I mean, from Officer Rateau saying that I mean, um, there may be staffing issues, you know, on that day because it's town day, of course, you know. I mean, so, so I, mean, I guess we should just make it really clear. I mean, um, that I, mean, I, I, I guess I'm not quite sure. I mean, he says like, I mean, staffing issues may preclude the ability to provide, you know, um, the detail. I mean, and so, so that introduces a bit of uncertainty into that. I and mean, so, I'm just wondering if the person requesting it, I mean, is aware of this and, and what they are planning as a contingency, perhaps? 
Um, we, I don't know if we asked Mr. Guernsey to attend. Uh, okay. Ms. Mar. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know. So there's just, there's that. I mean, and, and well, he's not here, so I can't really have a discussion. But I was just kind of wondering. You know, he, he also indicates I mean that he's in, expected about 500 people. I mean, three to five, three to 500 people, which is why they need the, the extra detail. And it is town day. You know, and so I was just kind of wondering, like, what's the it, what did people do with the road race beforehand? I mean, did they like run and then run over the town day, or did they just run and go home, or what? Mrs. Mahan. Yeah. Um, both, uh, as well as, um, and I, I'd leave it to the town manager just to sort of follow up on this, but previous with town day and town day, the road race and police details, especially for that day, um, what's happened in the past is when they have roll call very, very early in the morning on Mass Ave, um, the shift commander, he or she, she or he, um, sees um, what officers they have and then um, disperses them accordingly. So that's what they always did with the road race, with the understanding they would come back to town day. So traditionally in the past, town day starting, now it's starting later, so that'll be even better because whatever officers, unless all details can be filled, which is really not usually the case for the road race and town day. We siphon over and they'll come back. Yeah, I got that. I was just wondering about the, the people who did the race, you know, so, so it's like they expected three or five hundred people there. And so it's fine. I mean, competition's good. We'll just have to, like, make town day especially appealing down here so that people will run the race and then want to come back to the center. But I just really wanted to flag I mean, what Officer Ruto had said there and just wonder um, what the contingency was. I mean, so I'll stop there and then, and then maybe ask Mr. Alessi a question if um, my colleagues, unless my colleagues are, don't have any other things. Mrs. Mahan? Uh, first of all, second Mr. Dagan's motion to move approval? Yeah, I didn't, but I will now, yes. Okay. Yeah. And then um, after Mr. Dagan's, I did just had some very brief remarks on um, number nine the school bus parking at Audison. So, um, but I'll go after when the chair tells me to go. Now it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, on, I, I, as we all did, read the memorandum provided by uh, the police department and others, Ms. Fox, et cetera, regarding uh, electric school bus parking, which I was already thinking of that area even before this. and living sort of kitty corner, literally I can see that exact parking lot. Um, and I know what how parents park in the morning. Um, uh, I'm assuming it, it, it isn't in there that the first week or so either some besides just signage saying where you shouldn't park. And I think once those electric school buses start coming in, we may want to expand that because they legit park like everywhere, which I understand. Um, but I don't know if the town manager knows or could um, follow up with that. Oh, are we just putting the signs up saying the restricted parking, I think it's 45 feet on Fesden, or maybe the first week will we have somebody down there for sort of a friend or cones or something? Mr. Feeney? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mrs. Mahan, the plan was to post them as no parking for during the school day for the first 55 feet heading east from Fessenden down Appleton Place. So of course, as you know, signage is not necessarily self-enforcing. So I think it would be prudent if we considered at least for the first week, perhaps placing some additional cones. And based on feedback from uh, the folks within our transportation department, if we need to you know, deploy officers or something to help ensure that that, uh, what we're calling swing space is available, we can do so. And I'm not looking for anyone to get a ticket. It's just, um, it's crazy. It's going to be some education at first. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, so um, to Mr. Alessi, you know, so there's a couple of questions and, and a suggestion. So the question if is, you, so you give me just a moment to go to the table here. Mr. Alessi, you can come on up to the, uh, to the table. And just introduce yourself for the public. My name is John Alessi. I'm the Senior Transportation Planner in the Department of Planning and Community Development. Great, thank you. So I'm all in favor of this. I just wanted to know what were the safety issues that you discovered when you looked. And I ask because I have conversations about these things, me, both in town and out of town. I just kind of wonder if there are any lessons from this that might be able to apply you know, in other situations. So, 
Sure. The um, issue here identified by Officer Corey Rateau when we did an in-person site visit is that he felt upon further inspection of the area that at this particular intersection there would be um, potential conflicts with trail users and I think that Mill Street in particular has been a safety concern according to Officer Rateau there was a um, collision with a bicyclist at that crossing in the past week or two so you know he just had more concerns as he looked into the issue more in depth so when we went to the site he suggested a nearby location that would kind of achieve the same proximity to other stations within the blue bike system but not necessarily at a crossing where there could be potential potential obstructions with trail users where there's already an ongoing safety issue great and that was a, a collision between a cyclist and and a vehicle I okay think. all right, all right. Oh, cool thank you you know and so my um, my suggestion uh, uh, because you said that you were going to work with the MBTA meaning that it might take you know, up to a year um, during um, Mr. Himes um, well during the interregnum when Mr. Heim he was was king for a day you know I had my um, usual conversation with the town manager on that day and we talked a bit about you know, the um, the work that I had done with the advisory board to try to work through this issue about access so I'm going to suggest me that uh, he actually told me to, to take a uh, work with the town manager on this. So, so I'll suggest that uh, maybe you contact the town manager and maybe all three of us and maybe even um, 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 one of my other colleagues, me, or someone from TAC uh, can work with us on that. But I would just want to kind of update you on what I've learned me, and, and maybe we can take a multi-pronged approach on this, me, both um, um, with respect to how we approach it you know, as a town, but also maybe try and get other towns on board with this because I think if we go for the regional solution it might give us a greater probability of success it may slow it down too but I think it increases the chances I mean that that will get some real movement on this so that's it thank you Mr. Hurd. hi um, I think the new location is fine again as a temporary location it's already noted in the memo that we're going to continue to work with with the MBTA to find a, a better location mm -hmm. um, and I would only say to the town manager I had mentioned this before it's kind of unrelated but related to this request that those particular spaces after hours always seem to be there's no one in there so that I don't think this is going to be overly burdensome to lose four of the, the uh, permanent parking spaces but I would like to look into the feasibility I know we don't have it anywhere in town right now. I mentioned this to Attorney Heim, so Attorney Cunningham, you can forward this along. But the feasibility of having permit parking in those spaces till say five o'clock, as a baseball parent who just came in hot from the baseball field, it's always a little frustrating because there are the safety issues on the other side of the field because people are parking everywhere and they're parking out in the neighborhoods. Then you go around back and all the permit spaces are empty every one of them and we get tickets if, if we you know roll the dice and park there because they're still ticketing um, as they should because it's it's restricted but if there's a feasibility of having some sort of a permit system until five o'clock or whatever the, the time is that works based on the people the usage of people that work there that I'd be very interested to see because I think that solves a lot of problems in the area alleviates the burden of taking away some of the spaces so I would just throw that out as a comment there but again this is fine as a temporary location assuming we can work with the MBTA to get a better spot so, any further discussion all right so on a motion for approval of the consent agenda by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mrs. Mahan all in favor in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the 5-0 vote in favor Thank you very much. We'll see you again, Mr. Alessi. We move on now to the uh, uh, items 10 through 13, which are appointments. And the first item is the Board of Registrar of Voters. So if you're in the room tonight and you are a candidate for uh, appointment to that, would you please raise your hand? All right. If you are in. Mr. McDonald is here. Yes. Oh, oh, there you go, sir. Sorry, I didn't see you there. All right, good. We got you. I'm just identifying who's here. And then if you are on Zoom and you are a candidate for appointment, 
uh, to the uh, Board of Registrar Voters, would you please raise your hand in Zoom so we can identify you and bring you in to the meeting as a speaker. We have Mr. Murray, Robert Murray. All right. So let's start uh, with Mr. McDonald in the room, sir. You could um, come up to the table, introduce yourself. So for uh, the benefit of the public and my colleagues, this is, uh, these are appointments that are recommended by the Republican Town Committee. And my understanding is we have uh, one appointment to make to the Board of Registrar of Voters. And we have, uh, we've had four people express interest. So we've invited you to come before us tonight. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself um, and say where you live and say anything you want to the board about your interest in serving in this capacity. All right, my name is uh, Ralph McDonald. Present time, I live at Drake Village. Uh, I grew up in Arlington, Puritan Road, up at the farm. There were six of us in our family. Uh, graduated from Arlington High. Lived here my, most of my life and everything. And um, just wanted wanted to be active with something in the town. You know, I always loved the town, and I heard there was an opening with this. So, I'd like to allow. Thank you very oh, much. Hope. That's the spirit that makes Arlington a great place to live. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, turn to my colleagues if you have any questions for um, Mr. McDonald. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. I have to divulge that um, I do know Mr. McDonald very well. Thank you for your service, sir. Appreciate You're welcome. That. Um, he's been very active in the Arlington community. I've worked with him on um, many endeavors, uh, mostly sort of around social programs with uh, programs for children or adults, fundraising um, for friends of ours and friends that we meet in the in the time of need. So um, I, I'm thrilled to see Mr. McDonald here tonight, and I, I just wanted to take that opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dickens. I'll say I recognize Mr. McDonald too. You know, so, so we 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 all we spend a fair amount of time at goals together. You know, so, so yes. or, or True Fitness, I guess, is the name. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, so um, uh, yeah, yeah. I like your I like your attitude. You know, uh, a lot. And, and if it doesn't work out for you here, you know, and you have a lot of energy. I mean, there are a lot of things that uh, you could do in town. And so, so uh, maybe. I'd be happy to tell you more about that. You probably know already, Ian, but certainly could encourage you to um, you know, join some other boards and commissions. Even if you get this, there are those opportunities. I mean, so it doesn't preclude by any stretch. I mean, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, and Ms. Mar, if you'd bring in Mr. Murray from Zoom. Mr. Murray, you should be able to unmute and uh, turn your camera if you so desire. Good evening, sir. Can you hear us? Uh, it, it, I believe you're muted, Mr. Murray. Give him a moment here to unmute. Hello. There, we got you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. I guess I was muted. Yeah, just uh, intro. Yes, we can. Just if you would introduce yourself, uh, say where you live, and uh, express your your reasons for wanting to serve in this capacity. Uh, I think I submitted a, a resume as uh, suggested in the letter. Yes. Um, what I didn't indicate, though, was that I did grow up in Arlington. I attended the Brackett School. Uh, what used to be called the Junior High West, Arlington High School class of 1965. And I lived in Arlington until I graduated from Tufts in 1970. And um, unfortunately, when I got back from military service, I was unable to afford to live this close to the city of Boston. So I ended up out in the Lemons to Fitchburg area and uh, that's where I began practicing law for 30 years. And I moved back to Arlington, I think in 2008. And I now reside with my wife, Cynthia Hamilton. She's also class of Arlington High in 1965. 
and we moved back into her childhood home at 45 Jason Street and purchased it back from a party that her parents had sold it to almost 50 years earlier. Um, in any event, I then moved my law practice down to Arlington in 2008 and had my office at the corner of Jason Street and Mass Ave opposite the uh, Jason Russell House. And I continued practicing there for a good 10, 10 or so years. And presently I'm 95% retired. I have one or two clients that simply won't let me retire and uh, insist that I hang in there until they retire. <laughs> so I have a few cases uh, that I'm working on. Um, as my resume indicated, I have been involved in a lot of civic activities. When I was living out in the Shirley, uh, in, in Shirley, Mass, I moved out there after the service in the mid 70s. And I served in a variety of capacities. And uh, <clears throat> when my practice got to the point where I had to cut back a little bit, uh, I did so. And then I moved over into and, and lived in Lunenburg for a number of years. And as I say, I moved back to Arlington in 2008. Um, I was approached by someone uh, who said that they would like to nominate me for a position on the board. And I said, you know, by all means, I, I have the time and the experience and the inclination. And uh, so here I am. I apologize for my appearance. We had a pipe break here in the house today on our second floor. And we've been mopping and soaking up and uh, it was a total disaster, but everything is under control. No problem. And good luck with your home, home repairs. Thank you, sir. Um, any questions or comments from the board? Any questions for Mr. Uh, Murray? Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Just very briefly, I also want to um, acknowledge and thank Attorney Murray as a U.S. Navy veteran. I want to thank you for your service. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear. Try again, sir. How about now? Is that better? It's a little better. Oh, sorry. My laptop, my laptop volume is all the way up, but it just doesn't seem to be very good. That's okay. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I was noting that you are a U.S. Navy veteran, and uh, I want... I'm very impressed by that, and I, I, I want to thank you for your service and your family for uh, doing that for us, and I'm thrilled to see you here tonight volunteering for something else. Thank you. I, uh, I was drafted, of course, into the Army after I graduated from college, and I had hoped not to spend uh, much time on the ground uh, in Vietnam, so I joined the Navy. In my four years, I never was on a ship. And I spent 42 months in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's uh, uh, three and a half years. Very good. Thank, thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to make sure that uh, do we have Joyce Mooney Clark or Mary Ellen Curl Vaccarello present? Yes, please come on up. the table, make yourself comfortable, and um, as usual, introduce yourself and uh, say what you'd like to us about this position. Hi. I'm Mary Ellen Curl Vaccarello. I grew up in Arlington. We moved here from Cambridge when I was five. I'm class of 76 from Arlington High School. Um, I was married to a military member. We were in Hawaii. We were in... Um, Scott Air Force Base in Illinois, and then we came back here to take care of my dad. Um, he was, um, he lived to be 93, and we're back at the family home up on Hawthorne. So, actually, right around the corner from Ralph, where he used to live. Um, a lot of my friends were town meeting members growing up. Um, I don't know if you knew Earl Rowe or any of the rows. Um, Chuck Pappas, I don't know if that name rings a bell, anybody. He's in Florida now. <laughs> Chuck and Nancy. I know, I love their, their whole Sorry, thing. Sorry, Mr. Chair. So, um, 
don't know what else I can tell you. Um, not working. Um, worked at Leahy Clinic when it first opened years ago. Worked for the phone company for over 25 years. So, but other than that, um, just getting back into doing other stuff. The kids are gone. <laughs> They're often married, so. Great. Start doing other things. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Any uh, questions from the board? Thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Okay. And then fine, the final name we had was Joyce Mooney Clark. So, and did we see her on Zoom? I don't see her. No. All right, not in the room. Okay. So at this point, uh, thank you, uh, thanks to all who are willing. We have one uh, position to fill here, so I will look to the board for uh, further discussion or nominations. Mrs. Mahan. Okay, I wish we had more than one. <clears throat> for some reason, I had it in my head too, but it's just the one. Oh my goodness. Um, definitely want to thank everybody for uh, submitting their name. And as my colleague, Mr. Diggins, said, um, if, we, if we can't uh, plug you into this position, we certainly look forward. Or if you do get this position, look forward to seeing the involvement and the energy um, for other endeavors in the town. But I would like to nominate Mr. Ralph McDonald. Second. Second for Mr. Zacorsi. Any further nominations? Well, I'm, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm going to nominate Mr. Murray, you know, and uh, I just feel that, you know, his, his legal experience, I mean, and, and um, his, his, um, his civic um, experience, I mean, you know, I think is going to um, stand him well if um, this board gets activated, I mean, for some issue. I, mean, I certainly remember in my first election, we had a recount, even, so that's when I became very aware, I mean, of, of the of existence and, and, and the role that this board can play. I mean, um, I mean a few votes got, got changed. I mean, uh, um, other than that, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I mean, my other question is that maybe for the clerk or someone, but I'd really like to see this board just kind of get a little energized and really do um, something more. It says, I mean, that they used to be involved in getting people registered. We certainly use a lot more of that, I mean, and so I'm not sure where that role went. I mean, is it in the clerk's position or what, you know, but, but I, mean, I could see maybe the next time, I mean, like if, if a position gets renewed, I mean, we ask them, well, how many people do you get registered? I mean, and if they didn't get any, you know, then and maybe look for someone. I'm being a little humorous here, but I'm just saying I think I'd like to see something more happen with this role. I'm not saying that Ms. M uh, Mr. Murray would do that, but I just say, looking at um, his resume, I'm, I'm really impressed. So we'll make a little bit of a race out of it. if. I get a second. <laughs> second. So we have a second for Mr. No, the nomination of Mr. Murray by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further discussion? Do we need to close the nominations or no? We didn't formally open That's them, true. so okay. I'm fine, fine yeah. with just being informal there. All right, so I'm going to ask Attorney Cunningham if you would poll each board member for their vote. Mr. Diggins. Mr. Murray. Mr. DeCourcy. I'm Mr. McDonald. Mr. Ms. Mahan? Mr. McDonald. Mr. Hurd? Mr. McDonald. Mr. Murray. And the result is, I believe, three votes for Mr. McDonald. So recorded. Thank you, sir. Congratulations to Mr. McDonald, and thank you to all candidates who were willing to serve. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to item 11, appointments uh, to the Conservation Commission. This item, agenda item might have been called deja vu. <laughs> yes. uh, is, uh, Mr. McBride, if you'd like to come forward. The source of my remark is that we very recently appointed Mr. Brick McGrath as associate member of the Conservation Commission, and uh, he's done so well that they've decided to make him an honest member, so as a full member of the commission. So uh, I know that you've recently talked with us, so we can make this uh, certainly very brief. But if you just introduce yourself and, and where you live and, and anything you want to say to us about this uh, opportunity. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to the board for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Brian McBride, I live on 36 Eastern Avenue. I've been there for 23 years or so, raised my child there. Um, 
I recently retired, as you may remember from last time. <laughs> I'm involved in the Open Space Committee and was an associate member of the Conservation Commission for the past three or four months. I really enjoyed the work there. I feel like I've clicked well with the team. Um, I'm learning more. There's a lot to learn in this job. I don't presume to be by any stretch an expert. But I think I can contribute, given my background in chemistry and water treatment early in my career and my work with the uh, Open Space Committee. Um, I think it's an important role. I think we need to continue to find a balance between progress and habitat protection. I think the Conservation Commission plays an important role there. I'd love to have an opportunity to serve in that manner. Terrific. Thank you, sir. Any discussion there? Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll um, move approval of, of Mr. McBride's appointment, and I did do want to point out this is probably one of the quickest terms <laughs> as an associate member um, that I've seen because it moved back before us on May 8th. So uh, uh, assuming there is a positive vote, uh, congratulations, but also thank you for your interest and for the important work that you've done to date on the Conservation Commission. You're welcome. Second. Discussion. Mr. Diggins? Yeah, no, I'll just make a comment. I mean, you know, seeing this again, I mean, uh, I noticed this time that you did Peace Corps work in Malaysia. You know, That's right. Impressive. You know, and, and you also say that um, uh, active in local community service, is that still the case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm involved with the Peace Corps board in, in Boston area. I'm involved with some uh, Af Afghan refugee resettlement work. I'm trying to keep my, <laughs> myself busy during my retirement. It's been a great pleasure, honestly. I got it, but that local community service isn't involved in Malaysia at this point. No, you know, no. Yeah. Although we did do a project uh, a couple of years ago where we built a boardwalk in this water village in Malaysia. We raised funds locally during COVID. That was that was fun. We were able to do it without a visit. Yeah, well, good, good, good work. I mean, thanks. Happy to have you on board. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, and a motion by Mr. DeCourcy and seconded by Mr. Hurd to appoint Mr. McBride to the Conservation Commission as a full member. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five nothing vote. Thank you again and congratulations. Thank you very much. Moving on to item 12, Library Board of Trustees. Uh, we have, and I believe these, uh, both of these people are in Zoom, so let's bring them in. We have Rebecca Gruber and Rebecca Steinis. So this is the season to appoint people named Rebecca to the Library Board of Trustees. Let's start with, uh, she's on the camera first. We'll start with Rebecca Steinitz. If you can unmute yourself and um, there we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, can for, you your very, for your very fancy office there. <laughs> Good evening. I, uh, I, <laughs> please just, inter we've read you, we have your materials, but feel free to introduce yourself, say where you live and, and give a brief statement to the board. I apologize for calling in from my car. I am on vacation, but it is a pleasure to be here. I'm very excited, and it's, it's nice to see you all. My name is Rebecca Steinitz. I live on Cleveland Street, which anyone in East Arlington will know is the street that the Fox is on. And I am, a, uh, I am somebody who is on a personal name basis with my librarians at the Fox. I am a book reviewer, a writer, a literacy coach in urban schools, and I'm also a communications consultant. Um, and I am somebody who is, well, let me also say that I was very involved in the Arlington schools for about 10 years. I was the president, uh, the first president of the Arlington Education Foundation. Before that, I was on the board of the Arlington Schools Foundation. I was on the Thompson School Council. I was on two hiring committees for um, Arlington High School principals, and I was also on what might have been the first book challenge in the Arlington Public Schools. I was on that committee as well and wrote the decision. We, we did not ban the book. We, we kept the book. Um, I am a passionate book and library person, and I am now after several years of being on boards outside of Arlington, excited to get involved in the community again. And I realized that the library at this moment when libraries across the country are under challenges and libraries across the country, and especially in Arlington, are such valuable resources for their communities. This was, this was the perfect place for me to get involved again. And um, when I met with Anna and Sandy, I was even more, ex on his last day of work, I was even more excited about the, the potential for growing support and growing new buildings and growing collections for 
the Arlington Libraries. Thank you, and thank you for calling in on vacation. It's great to see you. Any questions for the board? Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll now turn to Ms. Gruber. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, I know all of you. Yes. <laughs> and you know that I do a lot of different volunteer work in town. Um, but this opportunity is maybe the most special. I've been a lifelong uh, lover of reading. Um, I'm a retired librarian. Um, and all of the volunteer work I've been doing in the town has been towards the goal of making Arlington um, a more welcoming and inclusive community and, and facilitating um, accessibility and information sharing with community members. And to me, uh, libraries are really the nexus of those goals of um, a space for our community to come together and share information be that books or other types of media. Um, I've also been attending the uh, library's board meetings for more than a year now, so I know many of the initiatives that they have ongoing, two of which are particularly exciting to me. One is the expansion of the teen programming, and the other is the potential rebuild of the Fox Library with the opportunity for housing. So I'm super excited that I'm being considered for this, and I'm anxious to get to work with the board. Thank you very much. And I want to say to both of our applicants, who I know from their extensive community service, that we are very lucky to have both of you willing to serve in this capacity. Um, you're both uh, tremendously valuable members of our community. Any discussion, further discussion from the board? I guess I'll need a motion. Mrs. Mahan? Well, since I have Ms. Gruber and Ms. Steinitz sort of as a captive, captured audience. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, pass something along to you. Um, the library is, both, some or both of you probably heard, is really my first love. That's where I started um, in Arlington when I was 14. Had three jobs after school. The library was my favorite. And back then there was no Google. It was the card system, Dewey Decimal. So uh, it kind of played into that. But I just saw recently in, I don't know if it was Lemonster or Fitchburg, but they're a board of library trustees. And I'm just throwing this out um, after the vote when you are um, on the library board of trustees. Um, and I know one of the initiatives Ms. Gruber spoke about was a, a teen initiative, but either Lemonster or Fitchburg recently announced a teen um, seat for, for their uh, Board of Library Trustees. And I thought that was so exciting. Um, I know I would have been all over that 100 years ago, back when I was in Arlington High. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying teens aren't involved uh, with the library or, or the Board of Library Trustees, but since I said I have two of you here tonight, I'd like to sort of pass that on to you. I'm not saying that's the answer to it, but you know maybe there's something else. Um, and I'm, I'm thrilled that I actually do know both of you. Um, get a great name, that's my Rebecca, who is also a librarian, and up until she started having babies, worked at the library. So uh, I would like to, on behalf of Ms. Gruber, Ms. Steinitz, the Rebecca team, move approval. <laughs> we have heard from Team Rebecca. I'll second that. All right. Any I'll second discussion? it. Yeah. And I'll add, Ms. Mahan, what a great idea. I love that idea. I mean, I don't know if they can do anything with it, me, but... It's a great idea, you know. So, so yeah, and and, uh, and and no need to apologize for being remote, folks. I mean, it's it's great that the technology allows us I mean, this um, opportunity. So, thank you for joining us. All right. So, on a motion to appoint both Rebecca's to the Library Board of Trustees by Mrs. Mahan, a seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, five nothing. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Okay, finally, we have an appointment uh, to the Transportation Advisory Committee, John Eslanian, term to expire uh, January 31st of 2025. So do we have John here or online in any capacity? There he is. He's also to go, hello, sir. Good evening. Yeah, introduce yourself, tell us where you live, and uh, briefly express your interest in uh, serving in this capacity. Sure, thank you. I'm John Eslanian. I live on Top Street in East Arlington. Uh, moved to Arlington about 12 years ago uh, with the 
primary reason, I think, was transportation. Uh, just I feel that Arlington is a, a sort of transportation vortex in the in the uh, greater Boston area. I teach in Lynn and uh, I'm able to commute uh, when the weather is nice, I commute by bike using, uh, using the Northern Strand. Uh, we're able to, you know, get around on the Minuteman. We have two highways. We have Route 60 and Route 16, which are sort of, um, you know, older cross town, if you will, uh, roads. So I, I, I value um, the position of the town, but I also appreciate the fact that transportation is one of those issues that, really cuts across a lot of different divides that we find in society. Um, so, you know, it's important to me that our uh, senior residents are able to get around easily. It's important that our uh, parents and, and children can get around easily and, uh, you know, multimodal aspects of that. So uh, I've been serving on the committee in a, in a at-large position um, uh, for about a year. And I've enjoyed it. Uh, I'd like to continue serving on the committee and serving the town, and especially as we kind of deal with this post-pandemic uh, madness of drivers and, and uh, electric uh, bikes and things. There's a lot of a lot of interesting opportunities coming up uh, to to sort of make sure that Arlington stays safe and and stays uh, accessible and and mobility is the top of that. Thank you, sir. And as someone who rode an electric bike to the meeting tonight, I can verify that that is, uh, that is indeed a, a, a wonderful new opportunity and does prevent, uh, present um, challenges as well. So, uh, but thanks to our good uh, town manager, I had a good place to lock it up tonight. So well done, sir. Uh, any discussion from the board? Okay. Guess we need a nomination. Uh, all right. Sorry, vote motion. I'll make a motion to approve the nomination. Right. Second. Okay, on a motion to approve the uh, appointment by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mr. DeCorsi. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, five nothing. Welcome, thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. All right, now we move on to the licenses and permits uh, section of the agenda. So now we have first up for approval a change of license category from wine and malt beverages to all alcoholic beverages in the and a change of Manor, the manager. This is the Burritos Corporation, Arlington Restaurant and Diner. And we have uh, the Musculus Burritos from 134 Massachusetts Avenue. Do we have representatives tonight? Please come up to the table. And I, uh, please correct my pronunciation of your name, sir. <laughs> Welcome. So uh, please introduce yourselves and uh, just give us a, a brief explanation of uh, the request. My name is Janice Pascucci. I represent the Barretos family. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Themis Barretos. I'm the owner of the Angleton Diner. Excellent. Good. Um, you want to just give us a, a brief rundown of, of the request? Um, the diner has been serving breakfast and lunch for a period of time. They closed down for dinner for a while and now are interested in reopening at dinner time and thought that they would benefit from supplementing their dinners with changing the, <coughs> excuse me, the alcohol um, per permit that we have. And um, Mr. Barretos has requested that he be named as the manager as he is the full-time on-site um, manager now. And he manages all of the alcohol that's purchased, where it's placed, where it's locked up at night and the serving of what is there. We'll turn to the board, Mrs. Mahan. Um, good to see you, Mr. Barretos. Um, I am no stranger to the Arlington Restaurant and Diner. I have to profess that right away. Um, uh, and I'm thrilled to hear that you're dipping your toe back into the dinner venue. Uh, and I know how difficult that is, so I'd like to move approval. Okay. Second. Any discussion from the board? Any questions? All right, a motion to approve by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say aye. One second. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Attorney Cunningham, thank you. Please, sir. Uh, just, there's a public Public hearing. comment. Yes. 
Thank you. Before the meeting, I said, please stop me if I'm about to do something wrong, and he did. So we have a good man here at the job. This is a public hearing. So is there any public comment in the room? Please raise your hand or uh, the same on Zoom if there's comment on this proposal. It takes a village to help a chair. All right, I think we're ready for a vote now. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Hurd, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you and good luck, sir. Thank you. All right, next up we have for approval, common vitular license for ZAMSA at 434 to 436 Massachusetts Avenue. Ravi Raj, 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 Raj Karkanar. That's the best I can do, but please say it correctly for me. And introduce yourself, sir, and uh, tell us about this request. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Town Manager. Uh, my name is Ravi Raj Karkanar. Uh, I live in Burlington. And previously, I used to live in uh, Arlington. And now we are in process to buy a restaurant, which is uh, already closed, it's Taipei. So we have applied for the food license. That's the reason why uh, we are here, me and my friend, partner, for the license. And uh, if you have any question about my experience running the kitchen and restaurants, I can answer. Excellent, thank you, sir. I'll turn to my colleagues for any questions or comments or motions. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I've gone through your menu. I can make next to nothing that's on your menu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I know you can. Uh, and uh, uh, my daughter-in-law is from Kathmandu, Nepal. So yeah, um, told I'm familiar with the cuisine. I'm trying to master it. It's the spices, I know. Um, so I'm uh, very appreciative that um, you chose an Arlington along with uh, the thoroughfare foods that, that you'll be offering. And my family is also in the restaurant business, so I know how difficult that is, and I know how much of a commitment it is um, for you and your family and your staff. So I do appreciate that. So I'd like to move approval. If your daughter is law, if your daughter in law is from Kathmandu, she might know. The, we are in also uh, are all generations. My ancestors, they, we are all in food business. And uh, in 1975, we started a restaurant called um, Sumai. So you, as you mentioned, she's from Kathmandu. She might know that. She's a uh, Joshi. I don't know. <laughs> that's a very, I'm told that's a common name in Nepal, but maybe not. <laughs> a second. A second. The headline for me will be that the uh, that momos are coming to Arlington. Yes. Because I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that particular item. So. <laughs> come, our restaurant is a momo special. Excellent. It's, uh, the sumai is the name of the momo. It's a different kind of momo. This just gets, keeps getting better and better. <laughs> Any further discussion from the board? Okay, it was, uh, who was the second on that? Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, yes. All right, so we have a motion for approval of the common vitular license by Mrs. Mahana, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Yeah. Ah, public comment. <laughs> He's earning his keep tonight, folks. <laughs> Do we have public comment in Zoom? Please raise your hand, or in the room, please raise your hand as well. Yes. For the public hearing, all right. Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Good luck, sir. Thank you for choosing Thank Arlington. You. Thank you very much. And I look forward to those moments. Thank you. All right, let's see how I do in the third one. For approval of food, <laughs> <laughs> a food vendor license of Alta Coffee Roasters, 805 Mass Ave, Jason Montano. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your business. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the time. Uh, my name is Jason Montano. Um, I'm a resident here in Arlington as well. Uh, my wife and two kids and I live in Arlington Heights. Um, I'm looking to uh, follow a passion of mine that's been for a long time to open up a micro uh, artisanal coffee roastery. Um, and I've been looking in Arlington for quite some time to do that. Um, and this uh, location has presented itself um, coming available in October. And so I'm trying to move on that. Uh, we're going to be a small roastery. It's a 600 square foot location at the moment. Um, so we're looking to start small. Um, we're going to start with just uh, whole bean coffee sales and then grow into on our three-year plan, grow into coffee drinks um, as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, very excited about the opportunity, excited to uh, help give back to Arlington, bring this to a place that has been a little bit overlooked. Um, and uh, so bring some life to that, that location and uh, look to give back to Arlington. Um, I would say that uh, one more 
item that we're looking for and also a passion of ours is uh, reduction of plastics, uh, single-use plastics in our environment. And so we're looking to utilize compostable materials um, in our shop, so through bags to drink, to drink holders, to um, everything, try to be zero waste as possible. So that's what we're looking to do. Terrific. Thank you, sir. I'll turn to the board for uh, comments, motions. Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll move approval and um, want to wish you the best of luck. Just one question from the um, information on your application. You had mentioned that you're going to seek to resell baked goods produced by local uh, local lo locations. And I'm just wondering, is that Arlington? Not that it matters, but just out of curiosity, is it Arlington businesses that you're I mean, it's a great question, sir. We certainly would like to do that for sure, um, and it's also part of our three-year plan. So I would say we're starting out just with the whole coffee beans, and we'll grow towards selling baked goods. Um, and certainly, we would love to, to have it be Arlington goods, okay. if, if at all possible. For sure. Thank you, Mr. Dickens. Well, I'll second it, and you sealed the deal with zero waste. I mean, so more power to you on that one. We're, thanks, sir. Yeah, thanks, Mrs. Mahad. I'm very intrigued that I've seen your floor plan, you have a coffee roaster, yes, uh, which I have no idea what that means. Could you give me like a three or four sentence of you, you're going out and picking the plant and putting it in and waiting a certain amount of hours or days? What does that involve? Um, sure. So um, essentially, we'll be uh, initially importing coffee, so we'll go through an importer. Um, there's one located in New Jersey that I've been developing a relationship with. Um, and we'll get co green coffee beans from them, um, usually in a large uh, a burlap sack, um, and it's usually about 150 pounds of coffee beans. Um, I'll take that, break it up into small individual bins off the floor, of course, um, and uh, then take about 12 kilos of those at a time into the roaster that I will then roast. A roast takes about, depending on what type of level you're going for, meat, light, medium, or dark, um, it's about 13 minutes to roast a, a 12 kilo batch of coffee beans. Um, and then you take that out, you cool them in a bin, um, and then package them and, and for sale. So if I'm really dragging and running on fumes, I can just stand right next to it and get coffee gel. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thankfully, it doesn't put off that much, but uh, I don't know how much of that goes through, caffeine goes through that. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's how we'll, we'll find out right It's there. exciting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. I, I, my only comment will be this sounds wonderful, and uh, apparently uh, we have not reached – a, a saturation point for caffeine in Arlington, having recently approved a Tate coffee shop and, and now an additional roastery. So that's, that's all to the good as far as I'm concerned. This is a public hearing, so do we have any comment from the uh, room or on Zoom? Please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none. On a motion from Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Diggins for approval. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Congratulations and good luck. When do you expect to open? Um, so October is when we're going to be able to move in and start build out, and we're looking at probably January or February to, to open up fully. All right. Good luck. Thank, Thank you so much. Right. Thank you, board. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. We have now reached citizens. Well, we, we say open forum now because it's open to all who live in Arlington. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter pres presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted on nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. I'm going to call up my trusty iPhone timer and set that to three minutes. And um, do we have anybody in the room who's here to make a comment on any matter? Please come to the table and uh, introduce yourself and your, where you live. Take your time. I'll, I won't start the timer until you get going. Oh, thank you very much. I'm <laughs> speaking more than anything. Welcome. So my name is Corey Spalding, and I live in Framingham. And you know from our emails that I have to have a very difficult conversation here. I happen to be an accidental whistleblower. I inadvertently stumbled upon some fraud, Framingham Natick Schools, started in 2010. My daughter was terribly abused to the point she's now fully disabled. She's required hospitalization. Anyway, so as you know, I did um, find that the fraud was happening here in Arlington as well. Uh, January 2020, I corresponded with Al Tosti and um, school committee, and I um, 
re-sent my, I connected again with Al Tosta. He didn't respond. He's aware of the retaliation against my child. Christine Deschla, who is now the Finance Committee Chair. Um, so she, I'm, I'm continuing to be retaliated against. Uh, she's abusing her power as the um, Board of Bar Overseer. She's um, in the, the I've gone to, like, Maura Healy was the Attorney General for seven years. She knew about it, Senator Warren. I mean, I've met with everybody, six U.S. Um, attorneys acting in, you know, um, acting in assistant. Um, and so I um, am asking that the matter be put on the agenda so that the public is aware what happens when you question the financial practices of a town. Um, Allington's great. I hate having to come here because you guys are all just so wonderful and everybody loves Arlington. Um, unfortunately, I am here for the children and I just want to make sure that no child ever goes through what my family has gone through and the retaliation. I mean, uh, my house has been broken into and somebody hid knives around and the police refused to arrest them. You just have no idea how terrible, horrible, and my daughter now 20, never been allowed to return to public high school. It's a violation of federal. I just want the whole matter to be put on the agenda. Please invite the FinCom, invite the school committee, and let's just let the evidence be presented. And um, again, I, I really appreciate that, okay? It's very difficult for me to talk about this. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's now turn to Zoom. We have uh, Catherine Farrell who would like to speak. You can bring her into Zoom. And we have an uh, additional person you can bring into Zoom and have them ready too, actually. Oh, uh, did, did uh, Catherine disappear? All right. Uh, perhaps she'll. Uh, hopefully, she'll try to reconnect. Uh, we have. Yeah. Go ahead and bring in. Bring in David T. There. Let's see if that works. All right. Oh, yes. Hello. Good evening, David. Hi. And I'm not sure why it said David T. This is David Watson yes, from 170 you, Franklin yes. Street. <laughs> Very good. Well, well, we'll take you under any, any last initial. But, uh, we appreciate your past service to the town. Go ahead, sir. Uh, just wanted to check. Uh, I have uh, some comments about uh, the Medford Street bike lane issue and wasn't sure whether now was the appropriate time or whether there would be an opportunity to comment during that discussion. I think now would be, would be great. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, uh, as I said, I live on Franklin Street and have been here uh, for a bit over 15 years. I uh, am on Medford Street almost daily, uh, whether I'm walking, driving, or uh, very frequently biking. And uh, I'm very much in support of adding bike lanes. Uh, I, I wish it had happened already earlier in the project, uh, but I understand uh, the need to uh, move through the process and get public input. Uh, the road is uh, definitely wide enough for bike lanes. And as uh, the uh, town transportation planners report noted, all of the residences along that stretch of, of the road uh, have driveways, and there's also parking available on all the side streets. Uh, so uh, I personally have experienced numerous instances uh, as a bicyclist of cars driving too fast, passing me too closely, and only two weeks ago uh, was involved in a road rage incident where a motorist passed uh, myself and a friend on bicycles too closely and then followed us into the neighborhood and confronted us in front of my house to continue um, the confrontation. Uh, now that I was able to defuse and 
the gentleman ended up apologizing to us for what he'd done, but uh, I'm sorry to say that I, I don't believe that that is an infrequent occurrence on Medford Street, and uh, so I would very much like to see bike safety improve there um, uh, by the addition of bike lanes. Thanks very much. And uh, Catherine Farrell has reappeared um, in Zoom, and so um, get her okay. good to go. And, um, and hold on just a second, Catherine. Um, Ms. Mar, if you're able to make her make that the speaker larger in Zoom. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. Good to see you. Okay, thanks for your patience. It said Zoom quit unexpectedly. Anyway, yeah. um, I appreciate your letting me speak. I'm uh, five streets. I'm speaking in favor also of the last speaker of making those, uh, making bike lanes on Medford Street. And I live on Park Street, uh, five parallel streets away. And about eight times a week, I cross um, Medford Street on my way to run in the Arlington Cemetery. And I have to say that the cars go quickly. And um, I think that the bike lanes will really improve the safety for the bicyclists will not be any uh, problem with the uh, Medford Street residents. I was part of that parking study that I, um, was done by John Alessi's predecessor, where we go out and for four hours, we, it was in October of 2022, and for four hours, you walk, once an hour, you walk the street. And the longest I saw one car there was for three hours. So I don't think we're gonna create an impediment to people who need to park. And then um, uh, on behalf of East Arlington, or everywhere Arlington, livable streets, we submitted a, a something in writing to you. And one of the things I'd like to note is that um, we took a picture two Saturdays ago, and you can see in the picture that um, uh, a bicyclist to, um, uh, to safely navigate um, Medford Street when there's a car there, they have to go into the traffic lane. And you, you saw that, um, that picture, and I think that um, by doing this, you're going to add a great improvement to Arlington, and you're also going to help us on completing the um, bike lanes that we want for complete streets and so forth. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, letting me speak. Thank you, Ms. Farrell. Good to see you. And uh, we have uh, Krista Kelleher and uh, Charles Zerberglu, who'd also like to comment. Um, from Zoom, and is anybody in the room? And, and yeah, we have some people who come into Zoom. So um, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and switch to the Zoom, just to switch to the room from the Zoom, um, and uh, bring in one of the gentlemen here who'd like to to address uh, the board. We'll get to everybody. It's now a good time to comment on the do not enter in Lake Street. That'd be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Introduce yourself, sir. So, good board. Good afternoon, Select Board. Uh, my name is Derek Schraub. I live on Dorothy Road. I've been an Arlington resident for about 10 years, worked for MIT as an engineer for Lincoln Laboratory. Um, you know, recently the uh, police department has been enforcing the do not enter signs off of um, Lake Street. Um, they've been there for all 10 years that I've lived here. You know, residents routinely ignore those signs and go into their homes that are, you know, a streetway. Um, Dorothy Road is obviously off that area in between Lake, Route 2, and the bike path. That is the only way I can access my house. Um, so when I'm coming home during rush hour traffic, you can easily have up to 15 minutes added to my commute to get there, not to mention if we're enforcing this, enforcing residents of that area to go onto Lake Ave and not come off of it, that adds more traffic. And I think the three things I want to urge the select board to think about when this topic comes up is safety, environmental, and also the inconvenience and inefficiency to the town. So safety reasons, you know, getting vehicles, whether they're fire trucks, you name it, to an emergency if there happens to be one, and Lake Street is gridlocked, that's not good. Um, Lake Street, that's narrowest point, is 28 feet wide. 28 feet wide is not wide enough when you have two lanes of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. They can't go anywhere. You can't get a fire truck through. So that's one thing to think about. So we're adding more people. Um, there's about 450 households in that triangle space. Um, and if we add that new development in the New York Lands, um, that adds another 136 households. Altogether, that's about uh, over 1,000 vehicles on a daily basis that would be going in there and not being on Lake Street traffic but instead with the enforcement policy we have today, that's adding another 1,000 vehicles to that rush hour traffic. Um, so, you know, safety is the first thing, getting vehicles through, especially emergency vehicles. Um, secondly, environmental. The time idling, again, up to 15 minutes to go to the, uh, to Birch Street to eventually turn right and get into my neighborhood. Um, that idling for about 1,500 or 1,000 cars 
adds about 2.5 tons of carbon dioxide a day in addition to the people who are already sitting there elsewise. Um, so obviously we don't want that in our town of Arlington. Um, no one does. And lastly, um, again, it's not just the inconvenience to the people who live in that development, my, my neighborhood. It's also the people who don't live there but have to use Lake Street to get elsewhere in Arlington. Um, so those are the three points I just wanted to add. Uh, there's a comment, uh, I think, a uh, correspondence that's, that's coming up on the agenda. I just wanted to add some, some numbers. I'm an engineer, um, so that's kind of how I, I relate. But um, I think there are some easy solutions to this. Um, other towns have, you know, do not enter signs that say accept residents. Um, you know, right now they're policing it. They're asking for your reg license and registration. They can quickly see what street you live on and say, hey, you're a resident. That's fine. Pass on by. Yeah, I think they've been doing it like every day for the past however many weeks now. Um, that's a lot of police details, and they actually had three or four, you know, cruises at a time. Um, but I think, you know, if we did this like once a month, we enforced it. I think you'd cut down on the people cutting through because obviously no one wants that. But I think at the same time, you'd be able to let the residents off the street and relieve the traffic off of Lake Street. Thank you. Thank you. There's three minutes on exactly. That must have been well, well rehearsed. Uh, thank you. And uh, let's. Uh, Let's go back to uh, Joe. You, you want to make a comment? Sure. Well, sir. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Uh, good evening. Uh, select board members, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, Joe Barr, uh, Park Street in East Arlington, um, town meeting member from Precinct 5. Um, I'm here, uh, as you might have guessed, to support the, med the proposal for bike lanes on Medford Street. Um, I'll also, just for what it's worth, mention my prior employment as the uh, former commissioner of transportation in Cambridge. Um, and I'm, but I'm not going to speak from that perspective as much as from the perspective of my uh, child, who you all had the opportunity to meet a little while, while ago in the context of um, Arlington Soapbox Derby. Um, one, of his, one of their best friends, uh, actually the son of the, one of the people who's in line to comment next, uh, lives on Medford Street. Um, and so we often find ourselves traveling there um, for that reason uh, by car, by bike, walking. Um, uh, as hard as maybe to believe, I also run on Medford Street. Um, but um, the, the the point I wanted to make is just that I've I've seen it from a lot of different perspectives, and um, I think parking a bike lanes on the street would be extremely valuable in terms of safety and mobility. But also parking on that street is mildly terrifying, um, and I actually think from a sort of safety perspective, not allowing parking on Medford Street, even though I recognize that there may be some inconvenience to residents, is actually beneficial from a safety perspective because when you as I have occasionally done and then thought better of in, in more recent years, park there or stop there, you are constantly worried that you're going to get rear-ended by the trucks and buses. And lest we forget, this is really the major truck route through the town, unfortunately, due to the, the truck restrictions on other roads uh, or, and particularly for hazardous materials. Um, and so there are a lot of trucks and a lot of trucks carrying not very fun things, as those of you who may recall the oil spill from several years ago. Uh, we'll, we'll remember. So I think um, this is, you know, the, the memo from staff speaks for itself, I think, in terms of the benefits and in terms of the, the response from residents, but I just wanted to add my voice saying that I think this will be a safety improvement, not, not just for cyclists, but really for all users of the street, and I highly encourage the select board to move forward with this proposal. So thank you very much. Have a thank good you, night. Mr. Barr. Good to see you again. Are there any um, other members? Are there anybody in Zoom who wishes to, uh, to do public comment? And this w this should be for any of the future agenda items, including Medford Street bike lanes. So, uh, we have Charles uh, Charles coming in. Yep. Oh, Krista Kelleher is in. So let's let's go to Krista. Good evening, Miss Kelleher. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for um, offering time for comment. I wanted to be there in person, but I really am thankful to have the opportunity to be on um, remote. Uh, mode of um, communication this evening. So my name is Krista Kelleher. I'm at 153 Medford Street in Arlington. I'm a town meeting member from Precinct 5. I fully support the proposed consolidation of on-street parking to one side of Medford Street for bike safety improvements. So as a resident of Medford Street for nearly 20 years, I have seen Medford Street used for parking in very limited ways, and I actually do encourage people who are visiting us not to park on Medford Street because it feels dangerous so for a parking situation, and it's even more dangerous, I think, sometimes to bike on it. So my, my younger son, I think quite accurately, noted earlier today that hardly anybody parks on Medford Street and that most parking is limited to postal service trucks and delivery vehicles. 
Providing space for bike lanes is absolutely necessary to ensure the safety of all bicyclists, including what seems to me to be a growing number of parents biking with children, younger children around our neighborhood and children biking to school. I think it's a great development, but I think we need to be very careful in how we promote um, or um, ensure that there's bike safety for everyone, children and adults. As the parent of a 16 year old and of a 12 year old, I'm consistently, I'm always concerned about my kids' safety as they bike on Medford Street. I've actually asked my 12 year old to stay on the sidewalk when riding his bike, even though I know this is expressly prohibited by our town bylaws. The proposed parking modifications provide a critical opportunity, I think, to move forward with ensuring bike safety on a well-traveled street in Arlington. And I hope you will move um, positive um, action in this, in this case. And I thank you very much for considering my remarks tonight. Thank you very much, Ms. Kelleher. And uh, do we have anybody else in Zoom uh, or in the room who would like to comment in an open forum tonight? We've had a hand raised by Charles De, 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 uh, De Virgilio a couple of times. So um, give a couple minutes there. Yes. I know that he did ask earlier, so maybe I'll just promote him to see. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, see, if, see if that works. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Amar. Give a moment to bring Charles into speaker mode. And Charles, if you uh, would like to comment, you can unmute yourself and turn your camera on this time. Good evening, sir. And you're Thank still you all coming. very much. Hi. Uh, my name is Charles DiVigilio. I um, own Alton Street Boxing and Fitness and Jen Renchuan Martial Arts. We're at the corner of Alton and Broadway in Arlington Plaza. At this time, there's five parking spots right in front of our school taken up by the parklet. And um, it's, they're not being used and it does impact our commerce. I was wondering if there was any way that we could either relocate the parklet in front of Fusion Taste or, and or minimize the number of benches and parking spots that are absorbed by uh, this parklet. It's really uh, all I had at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, and for, for our open uh, forum policy, we won't um, comment on that, but uh, I think the town manager has taken a note to, uh, to do with the, to absorb that comment and uh, go from there. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. All right. Any further uh, participants in open forum tonight? Okay. Then we'll conclude that portion of the agenda. Thank you to all who took the time to uh, communicate their views to the select board. Now we'll move on to traffic rules and orders and other business. And we have item 17, the Medford Street bicycle lanes. Uh, time for a revisit from Mr. Alessi. Welcome back to the hot seat, sir. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Uh, John Alessi, Senior Transportation Planner for the Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, thank you, select board members, for giving me the opportunity to speak for you this evening. I have a PowerPoint presentation prepared, so just one moment. Yeah. Just a moment to get ready. <coughs> All good, thank you. Great. That's better. Perfect. So my request to the select board is to approve the removal of on-street parking on Medford Street to accommodate the installation of bicycle lanes from Warren Street to Mystic Valley Parkway. Uh, next slide, please. So you can see on this map the proposed bike lanes on Medford, Medford Street and Green, which is approximate, approximately a third of a mile. The project will connect directly to the bike lanes implemented as part of the nearly complete Chestnut Street project outlined in orange to the left. The bike lanes will also tie directly into the future Mystic River path connection to the Miniman Bikeway in blue to the right. If implemented, Chestnut Street and Medford Street will be a half mile corridor of bike lanes that provide increased mobility for our residents who would like to bike while narrowing the roadway to calm traffic and increase safety for all roadway users. 
Next slide. So the purpose of installing these bike lanes is because Medford Street is identified in multiple planning documents as a priority for bike lanes and installing them aligns with other town projects that I've mentioned. Medford Street is identified in the Bike Facility Design Guide's lane sharing network passed by the Select Board in 2015 and Connect Arlington's priority bike lane network passed by this Select Board in 2021. This project will help build out a town-wide network of safer, more comfortable, convenient bike facilities to encourage bicyclists of varying levels of experience and comfort to move around, reducing the need or preference to drive. Narrowing this, the roadway will also make drivers less comfortable to speed on this corridor, creating safety benefits for drivers, pedestrians, transit users, and bicyclists. All of these goals outlined are in the town's planning documents. Next slide, please. So for background, Medford Street was repaved in summer 2022 and currently has a double yellow line. Curbside use is allocated for parking at bus stops, though parking regulations are currently unmarked. It is designated as State Route 60 and also a trucking route between Route 2 and I-93. And the MBTA bus routes 1895 also use this corridor. So to get an idea of what modes travel along Medford Street, DPCD, Department of Planning and Community Development, analyzed traffic counts conducted as part of the Chestnut Street Safety Project. So an outside contractor, Precision Data Industries, collected 24-hour counts for all travel modes between Thursday, May 12th and Saturday, May 14th. So daily vehicle traffic volumes range from 14,700 and 16,500 per day. Over the course of the three days, a total of 613 bicyclists traveled along Chestnut Street and most likely Medford Street as well, averaging about 200 riders per day. That's a very high number of bicyclists traveling along a corridor without bike lanes, especially early in the biking season and on a heavily trafficked roadway. This indicates that there is the demand for bicycle lanes here, the potential to induce further use, and therefore the need to create safer facilities for riders of all ages and abilities. Next slide. Medford Street bike lanes will also tie directly into the Chestnut Street Safety Project. I've included an excerpt from the pavement marking plan here for reference. If bike lanes are approved for Medford Street in green to the right, this will create a half mile corridor with safe connected lanes for the 613 bicyclists recorded traveling along this corridor over those three days in May and for many future riders too. Next slide please. DPCD conducted a parking study in September 2022, um, before my time in the town, on a Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then 10 a.m. to 5 p.m on a Thursday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and a Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This reflects when Arlington Catholic High School and the St. Agnes School are in session during the school week, a Wednesday when the farmer's market is open, and a Sunday when church services take place. Data was collected by walking the corridor during hourly increments to record use and turnover. The parking study revealed very low parking use. The greatest number of cars parked during one observation period was six total. That is less than 10% of the total number of potential parking spaces estimated to be at 77 using industry standards. DPCD determined that the residential nature of this area, off-street parking options, higher traffic volumes, and heavy trucking and buses help explain the low parking use, thus suggesting that curb space can be repurposed to prioritize bicycle mobility, safety, and connectivity in line with the goals of the Connect Arlington plan and others. Next slide. DPCD also released a survey in September 2022 to understand residents' thoughts on the project. A postcard was sent directly to Project Abutters on Medford Street, and the survey was distributed through town email notice and committees. It garnered 549 responses, including 59 from Medford Street residents. There was a majority support for bike lanes along the corridor, both among Arlington residents and Project slash Neighborhood Abutters who filled out the survey's open-ended questions. Some abutters noted that they park on Medford Street frequently, but parking data and anecdotal observations revealed lower parking activity than was claimed. I'll also note that all residences appear to have off-street parking and have direct access to eight side streets, meaning that there are options for visitors to park away from the busier Medford Street. Slide. If approved, DPCD will contract with Stantec to develop pavement marking plans that incorporate bike lanes from Warren Street to Mystic Valley Parkway. An example bike lane is included to the right. 
We will retain parking spaces if roadway width allows, like near the Warren Street intersection and at Mount Pleasant Cemetery. We will also integrate all MBTA bus stops into the design, and once finalized, we will coordinate with DPW to install. We hope to complete this work by the fall if approved by the board. Next slide. Again, my request before the select board this evening is to approve the removal of on-street parking on Medford Street to accommodate the installation of bike lanes from Warren Street to Mystic Valley Parkway. This will bring the town and its residents one step closer to achieving the vision it has set out in multiple planning projects, especially Connect Arlington. Since parking use is so low on this heavily trafficked corridor, this is a unique opportunity to implement traffic calming and support people who would like to safely bike in Arlington including the 613 riders I previously mentioned traveling along the corridor over that three-day period. Thank you for considering this request, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. Um, just um, before we go to the board, any comments from the town manager? I, if I could, I just wanted to uh, thank John for his thorough and detailed presentation, but also for uh, picking up where his predecessor left off, as I know you didn't. Uh, start this project, but I appreciate you taking it on and trying to see it through. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Oh, is that you, Mr. Hurd? Yep. Thank you. Um, first, I'll move approval. Then I apologize that I wasn't able to get back to you about me. <laughs> the pre-presentation, I was away last week and had some crazy weeks at work. Um, you know, we've had a few of these projects in the past couple of years, and when it comes to parking, it for me, it always becomes a cost-benefit analysis. What are you getting and what, what are we losing? And I'm always much more sensitive to parking in business districts or adjacent to businesses because that's critical parking for the use of those areas. I've never, I mean, we've had conversations with people about on-street parking in front of their house in a, a number of forums. I don't, I'm not of the opinion that anyone's entitled to park in front of their house. It's public property, um, unless it's private way. It's a whole different story. So, and there are just streets in town where it, on street parking just doesn't seem appropriate, like Lake Street. If you saw cars parked on Lake Street, you'd say that that's a safety issue. I think Medford Street is certainly one of those streets where, when if there were a lot of cars, that would be concerning too, because that would create even more safety issues. But the parking study showed that there's not a lot of utilization, that's not surprising given the topography of the street and the fact that all the businesses, all the houses, it's all residences and they all have off-street parking. So I think the risk or the loss is relatively low, if not an improvement, and the gain of the bike safety is certainly significant here for all the cyclists that use this, this stretch of of Arlington. I know Connect Arlington has been on a lot of people's mind for years as we kind of piece the town together and this is a very important piece to connect a couple of, of critical roadways. So I'm happy to support it. I, th I think it, it moves us forward and is certainly going to create a much safer area for cyclists and motorists and pedestrians and anyone that uses that area. So. Mrs. Mahan? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to second um, Mr. Hurd's motion and also thank Mr. Lessie, as the town manager pointed out. Mr. Feeney, you certainly jumped into spearheading projects from the beginning um, to some that have already started and, and moving on. Um, I almost think we would be negligent in our duties if we didn't um, approve this plan before us, especially with the um, Mystic River bike path plans mm -hmm. that will be kicking off in the fall, I believe. I was wondering if I could, Mr. Chair, if I could ask Mr. Alessi four to six, seven sentences. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's about a million dollar earmark um, to, con you know, once we have these bike lanes, if you could just give us a little bit of brief description on that project, where it is, is it just going out to bid for the plans or is it going to go out to be built? Sure. So, thank you. Um, this is Mahan. Um, we actually, our department has a meeting with the Department of Conservation and Recreation tomorrow to discuss the $1 million earmark we received. So we sh will be receiving that 
and the town plans on coordinating with DCR in order to design the, um, the project. So, at, so right now we're in the design stage. We're not, we don't know what the outlook is for construction, but that project will be starting relatively soon. And based on the feasibility that was completed last year, the scope of work will be beginning at the Miniman Crossing on Mill Street, continuing along Summer Street, and then at that point connecting to the Mystic Valley Parkway, which is DCR-owned property. And it will involve the redesign of the um, Medford Street Rotary, also on the other side with Medford as well, and down to, um, I forget the limit of that, but it will involve that entire scope of work. It will be an 11 foot separated shared use path, similar to the Minuteman, that will expand the region's shared use path network and create more opportunities for recreation and transportation. If I could just be indulged just a, a of teeny, teeny bit. <laughs> um, part of my new business, I can sort of take care now, but uh, I'll also speak about this under new business. Since you are meeting with DCR tomorrow, if um, you could speak with the town manager, mm -hmm. and if appropriate, if not appropriate, well, that's fine, but if you could just mention to DCR their uh, Greenway Trail, mm -hmm. um, which is a pedestrian, bicyclist, et cetera, trail. Um, this most recent storm and previous storms, um, CSOs have flooded that. Mm -hmm. um, and we had some residents and town meeting members down there, Kristen Anderson, David Stoff. And you could see in the trees, the used toilet paper, the used feminine personal hygiene, as well as uh, going through that puddle, which is sewage, which you can get really, really sick from that. Um, when DCR uh, initially proposed that, um, they indicated that they would be putting um, signage up mm -hmm. to because if you go on the Arlington list Facebook page you can see people going through with, with strollers with babies in it you can see people on bicycles just swishing through this and it's excrement sewage and I don't think they're aware of that so mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's necessarily the town's responsibility if you could um, after this meeting uh, have a conversation with Mr. Feeney maybe it's not appropriate to bring that up tomorrow because this is you know, an important project mm -hmm. and it doesn't have anything to do with it. But since you were here, um, and I, I'll bring it up again um, under new business, and I will say the town of Arlington is probably the least culpable in terms of this CSO situation. Uh, it's really, you know, going EPA and other routes, which I'm going to go. So I'm not asking you to raise that topic tomorrow. If you could just, you know, have a talk. And uh, I have a tentative time slot for a phone call with the town manager tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, Mr. Whitmer. Oh. So, well, <laughs> sure, sure. No surprise where I am on this. You know, so, so, uh, and, and I'm so happy, you know, that we have a motion a second already in place. You know, so uh, uh, I, uh, I think Mr. Amstutz did an amazing study. I mean, as I read it, I mean, it's like it's a really nice document, nice footnotes, and and everything. And, and I did notice I mean, in the the section on um, Pedestrian safety and crossings. I mean, uh, it seems like you know, it seems like we can do more. You know, and I know that's not your ask tonight. You know, but but I'd like to pursue you know, some of these you know, additional factors like the, the crosswalks. And so the question that I will bring up to the town manager when we have our first check-in eventually is, is is like, how can we move forward with these? You know, uh, is it something that needs to come to the select board and then to TAC, or or can we just kind of move forward with some of them? Um, here now, um, uh, well, excuse me, whether we can just move forward with the recommendations here I mean, through you, so we'll take that up. Uh, and also, I'll, I'll look into um, what happened in 2018 with the recommendation that was made by TAC I mean, and apparently came to select board. It's before my time, I mean, but I'm certainly happy to look into that, you know, so so, um, so great work, you know, thank you, you know, and that's it, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, th thank you, Mr. Alessi, for the presentation, and uh, I'm going to support this along with my colleagues as well, but just a question for clarification. Um, you had mentioned the first block, or well, you mentioned the Warren Street intersection. I believe that first block to Lewis Ave, if you're going towards Medford, where the road widens, you had mentioned your presentation, and when you and I discussed last week, is that still something that you may be looking into because the road widens? either attempting to keep parking there or um, 
if it's feasible, or I'm just to wonder if you can elaborate a little bit on um, what, what, what you're thinking for that first block. Sure. So I believe that the roadway width there is wide enough, probably, to accommodate both a bicycle lane, a travel lane, and parking. I cannot say for sure. I would have to work with the contract or consultant that we contract with, Stantec, to determine if it's feasible there, because if there is roadway width available, we should use it somehow, and if we can preserve parking, I think it it's completely feasible there. Okay, thank you. That, that's really the only block that, I, as I was looking at it, and, and, and as we discussed, so subject to that type of investigation and, and study, and, and clearly we wanna do what, what's safe, but um, since I spoke to you, I did speak to some residents on Medford Street, and they had uh, confirmed that, that, that the little usage in front of their homes. But the other thing they did comment on, as you did, is the number of side streets that are available um, in, in addition to the driveway. So um, I appreciate the work that, that you've done on this and, and the additional investigation that may take place. And uh, as, as I said, happy to support it. Thank you, Mr. DeCorsi. And I'll add my voice of support as well. I did a little field work yesterday. I took my trusty e-bike to Medford Street and gave it a gave it a, a tour. And you know that was a Sunday with little little traffic. And even then, I really would have been very glad to be in a, in a bike lane because um, of the traffic coming through and the in the width of that. So, um, in addition, you know, as a cyclist, I certainly appreciate this um, this um, addition to our cycling infrastructure. But I think just for as other speakers have have noted. Um, including Mr. Barr, that um, narrowing that, that roadway, and you yourself said, you know, can really benefit safety for everybody, including pedestrians, uh, by just um, by just the psychological effect that we have in that. So I think it's a win all around. I'm delighted that my board colleagues are are cognizant of the Connect Arlington plan that we did adopt this, this board um, two years ago. And I think this is a, a tremendous addition to that, and will be an investment in the future for uh, from exciting connections that are happening and are going to be in place. Any further discussion? Okay, so we have a motion to approve by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0 approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Nice to see you too, Mrs. Mahan. All right, that brings us to. Items 18, and really 18 and 19 are uh, very closely uh, related. <clears throat> Let me just get to this point in my notes. And I will do some explanation of this and kind of report to the board of my research and, and the options here. So we have in front of, we do have in our materials a memo from town council um, that will uh, provide general considerations and, and uh, Motions, but what we need to do is vote on a date to call a special town meeting on a specific date, and of course, then for opening and closing the special town meeting warrants. So, the context of this, for the benefit of the public and also uh, my colleagues, although they're certainly aware of this, is um, you know there are a couple of things we need to do in the fall for a special town meeting. One of them, and the biggest one of them, is is to take up the proposed changes to zoning. Um, that would bring Arlington in compliance with the MBTA community's requirements in state law. At the same time, compliance with that also would qualify Arlington to keep its place as one of the 10 communities that are um, on the list to participate in a state program, a state demonstration pilot that will allow 10, up to 10 communities to restrict or ban fossil fuel connections in certain new construction or major renovations. So at this town meeting, uh, there's been a long, months long, almost a year long process by led by the planning department and some very um, hardworking community volunteers in the working group to develop a proposal to hand off to the Arlington Redevelopment Board and that handoff is, is happening very soon. And the Redevelopment Board will bring in uh, zoning or bylaw requirements or recommendations to town meeting. So we'll do that in the fall we also have a zoning bylaw um, coming up, by the way, uh, for the fossil fuel restriction itself, and that's being led by the town manager and his, and his team, um, particularly Ms. Fox, for our sustainability manager. In addition to, uh, to those items, well, and I should, I guess, just further explain that these, these things are all connected, but to set the, to set the stage, uh, 
the town manager and I have consulted, and I've consulted with um, the, the uh, Ms. Ms. Ricker, the head of, of planning, the town clerk, the moderator, um, and it really looks like we are looking at between at least four nights, if we do three-hour nights, and up to six for special town meeting. Um, there's a lot, and the, the one thing I didn't mention is that in addition to the zoning bylaws for MBT communities, we have nine additional zoning items that were uh, are being carried over from the spring. Uh, you may remember that the previous town manager requested that those be deferred to the fall so that we could have a more streamlined uh, spring town meeting. So um, those are business zoning requirements that the ARB chair and, and planning department feel are important to, to take care of this year um, to keep the planning process moving. So um, we also have uh, the approval of collecting bar collective bargaining with the police patrolmen's. We have a couple of financial articles, a contingent appropriations vote for the override. If that passes, there'll be some money to, to, to appropriate. Um, there might be one or two other um, administrative items. Mr. Town Manager, am I missing anything? Just to enumerate what we've got in front of us. I think the only other consideration that we had, though it hasn't been determined if it would necess be necessary this fall, would be a consideration to establish a new resolve, uh, revolving account that would be authorized to accept uh, money from state and federal energy programs that's becoming available so that we can then receive it and put it back towards the projects that are seeing those installations and initiatives or uh, feed it forward to future uh, energy-related projects. And this is due to both the availability of ARBA funds as well as uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act uh, programs. So that, that's a consideration. Uh, that we're talking about when we may project to be receiving those funds and if it would be necessary to seek authorization this fall. But it's still yet to be determined, but on the list. Yeah. So I think, consider, right, considering all of that, I've spoken with the, with the ARB chair this weekend. Um, you know, I think, I think four nights minimum is a pretty good bet. I, could, I think it's fairly likely we could see five and possible that we could see six. Um, so that's kind of the context for the decisions about when we were to start um, town meeting. The other contingencies that I'd uh, like to make the board aware of and, and make the public aware of um, is that the MBTA communities in fossil fuel pilot participation and eligibility are, are linked, and they're linked specifically by the state. So if the, the, the eligibility the, the, to, we, we stay in the pilot if we um, are able to adopt compliant MBTA communities zoning. So that's, that's what the state decided to do. Um, so they're, they're functionally one and the same. And we need to be um, recognized by the state and validated as compliant no later than February 11th in order to keep our place in line to participate in the fossil fuel um, free pilot program. Um, so what happens between here and, and now and, and there with respect to these programs, um, the Fossil fuel bylaw is well underway. I think we're not too worried about that. that that'll be before town meeting, and it's an, it's an update um, to a bylaw that the town meeting approved um, two or three years ago that you know, wasn't adopted because there was no state provision, so it wasn't approved by the, by the Attorney General. But um, the Planning Department is planning to submit a draft proposal for MBT communities to the state for pre-review um, in, in the next week or two. That will give the state some time to start looking at the proposal, give them some time to give feedback to the redevelopment board. They're planning to have their warrant article hearings uh, starting September the 11th, so two or three hearings, nights of hearings in the middle of September. So the idea is that the preview process will give them some feedback and really get the state review on this started very early so, um, so that we'll have a really good idea of how close we are to compliance and what we would need to do if we're not there um, to get there. The ARB, the Redevelopment Board, then may make um, changes and tweaks to that, in which case the, the hope would be to have enough time after that um, to, to get some more feedback from the state before we, we take this to town meeting. And so in recognition of that, the, the Redevelopment Board Chair and the Planning Department um, Head Director um, are asking the Select Board that they think that October 23rd would be a good earliest date to take up MBTA communities. Um, however, 
everyone I've talked to has no objection if we were to start our meeting earlier than that and start working on other things like the other zoning articles or some of these non-zoning pieces. Um, so the timing from that then, you know, once town meeting, if, if town meeting does pass the zoning uh, articles that would create a district for MBTA communities, then, then those go to the state for formal approval and feedback. I think, you know, it's, it's kind of obvious, but I'll state the obvious that, you know, the sooner that, that the, town, the town meeting finishes those changes, the more time there is for the state to review it, and the more time potentially if the state says, oh, this doesn't quite work, you know, if the board, if the select board would want to go back and call another special town meeting to fix it, you know, that, that option would be on the table, whatever appetite there would be for that. Um, the later that we go, of course, the, the shorter the window for the state review process um, to happen. So working with all the, the players, and I've also met with the, with the um, ACMI, the, the Jeff Monroe, and the people who run the electronic voting and trying to get everyone's schedules together. I have a couple of scenarios to propose to the board for discussion and have lots of room for questions. Um, and uh, Attorney Cunningham is prepared to kind of go into more detail in a moment about the state approvals, uh, what we do and what we don't know about that. But I'll start with the, with the dates. And if, if you have a calendar in front of you in, our, in your packet, it probably <coughs> wouldn't be a bad idea um, to take a look. So because of the holiday on October the 9th um, and because of, a, um, of commitments of town hall being uh, reserved for the Friday the 13th, 14th, and, and 15th, um, the earliest availability that I think that we have a consensus uh, is that we could start potentially on the 16th, uh, but it would probably be better to start on the 17th, and that is because town hall will not be available for setup until Sunday night, first thing Monday morning, and um, the technical setup for the voting and for ACMI really needs a full day before then, plus you know, uh, to establish the connections and with all the voting with the satellite room and then another, another day um, into that. It's possible that that first day of setup could happen the week before. That would require setting everything up, testing it, unplugging everything, and coming, you know, and coming back. I talked to the moderator this afternoon, and his view is that, you know, that if that's what the board wants to do, we can work with that. He would feel better about not having to unplug the equipment. And, and maybe be a little non-traditional and perhaps start, if we, if we choose October, we could start town meeting on the 17th, perhaps uh, invite town meeting to, to reconvene on that Thursday. And then if we wanted to go back to a Monday, Wednesday routine, there'd be no reason we couldn't. If we did six nights, we would end on November 1st. Um, so that's kind of that timeline starting the 16th or perhaps the 17th um, and going until we finish. November 1st is, just, is six days before the town election for the uh, Proposition 2 and a half override. And um, I would say from just talking with, with folks, you know, the advantages of that, uh, of October, it does allow the maximum time um, for state approval and feedback for the, the zoning. Um, I don't know what's going to be more popular with town meeting members, October versus November, but there'll be some effect there. The, uh, and the, by the way, the clerk is attending tonight, so if you have any questions specifically for the clerk about how this would affect elections, she is available and happy to be, to be brought in for, for discussion. But in general, she said to me, it would be, October would be a little harder than, than doing it after the election, but it's, it's, it's possible. Um, I think the closer we get to the election, you know, the more, the more effect that could have. Uh, the moderator felt like, again, you know, he's happy to work with either an October or November um, cycle. His concern, I think very properly so, is the quality of participation in town meeting. So would there be people, you know, the override will be, will probably, will definitely has a yes campaign. It may very well have an active opposition campaign. People working on that, will they be less inclined to come to town meeting if the town meeting member is the closer gets to the election? I think that's an unknown, you know, that we don't know. It's a, it's a focus of attention question. Um, so that's October. No, if we were to, uh, n another option, I think that's before us. Can I ask one question? Oh, I'm please, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just barely long. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, I know you're saying the week of the 9th. Mm -hmm. We could do it, but we'd have to plug in 
unplug. I think that's just too burdensome. Yeah. So then um, the following week of the 16th, um, possibly doing a Tuesday or Thursday, or just thinking of people that say, Monday, Wednesday, it's always been Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, have something else. Um, are we bound? C could we perhaps start on Wednesday the 18th and then go, uh, just not asking an answer on that, but um, I'm assuming if we can do a Tuesday, Thursday, um, perhaps we could do start on the 18th, that's a Wednesday, and then Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday. Uh, that gives us five if we go four to six. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. put that out there um, just because, you know. Yeah. But it is a special. And then my other question would be if either the chair and or Attorney Cunningham could answer um, in their remarks. I think the answer is no. Mm -hmm. But just in light of the fact of using the memorandum we got from Attorney Heim and Attorney Cunningham regarding the state certification and the November mm -hmm. 12th date. Yeah. I'm sure the answer is no, but if you could address and or Attorney Cunningham, can we do a special within the special that we take care of MBTA communities? For earlier time. Fossil yeah. fuels. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. a very special town meeting, yeah. right? <laughs> um, I, I do want to address that. I think, that's yeah, it. no, that's, that's, that's good to have those. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, do, I'll try to be quicker just to lay out the, the November options so we can kind of have both things on the table and then have a really robust discussion about, about the implications. Yes. I just want to to our last two occupants, just so you know. Oh, yeah. We're, when, when that item comes up, we're just going to receive it. We're not going to talk uh, about it. Yeah. So I don't want you to oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. This, yes. this conversation about yeah. town meeting. I, are you yeah. sure you don't want to stay for this? Oh, you know, <laughs> this is, this, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurt. Okay, so alternatively, if the board wanted to wait until after the election to make things easier for everybody working on the election, either as clerk staff or, you know, as campaigning, yes or no, on, on, on the override. Um, the earliest that we could start would be November 13th, and that is just because of unavailability of our electronic voting ve uh, vendor, frankly. They have two other town meetings that week that they're doing in Massachusetts. So, I mean, we could start without electronic voting. That would be the only uh, option. Um, but town hall would be available. But I think if, assuming we want electronic voting, we'd be starting the 13th. You start counting out the days from there, and obviously we run into Thanksgiving week very quickly. Um, I'm guessing that there wouldn't be much appetite for, for meeting the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, but I don't know. Again, again, that would be up to town meetings, so <laughs> appetite, so to speak. So, you know, then if you, if you count that out, you know, then we're talking about coming back after Thanksgiving, maybe taking a week off um, and finishing, you know, perhaps the end of, of November, perhaps the first week of December. Um, so you know, pros of that would be there'd be no conflict with the election. Um, everybody would be more focused on just one thing. Uh, it would, you know, it would just shift the timeline um, for, for the work on MBD communities. But, you know, it may also, that may also have the moderator's view was, again, you know, could, that could affect town meeting member attendance because of people are less likely to come at Thanksgiving. We, we just, you know, it's hard to predict. Um, so, and I think, the other risk with November is, is uh, and this is where I'm going to bring in Attorney Cunningham, um, you know, it's less time for the different parts of the state uh, to have to review the MBTA community's compliance. Um, I think the, the, the big picture view I have uh, from ver talking with various people, including Ms. Uh, Attorney Cunningham and, and Ms. Fox today and the town manager, is that, you know, it's probably a low risk um, that there'd be a problem, but it's not. It's a non-zero risk. So I'll, I'll leave this to... Uh, Attorney Huntingham and Tony Hammond, the town manager, if you want to further elaborate on, on the implications there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to address what's in the memo and what you've already talked about. You know, to remain eligible for the fossil fuel free demonstration project, the town needs to demonstrate compliance with the, Mass the MBTA community's uh, general law. Now, what that means is, is somewhat of an open question. Would it be compliance if we as a town passed a bylaw? Um, Probably not. I think that's more likely than not. They, they wouldn't answer that question directly, but I'd say it's unlikely that demonstrates compliance. So that means demonstrating compliance most likely means that it has to be not only passed by the special town meeting, but then appro approved, reviewed and approved by the Attorney General's Municipal Law Unit. They have 90 days to review and approve any zoning bylaw or any bylaw passed by a municipality. So 
to really get that done, we need to have it to them prior to November 11th, 12th. Um, it's likely that they expedite it for us and perhaps get it back to us within 30 to 45 days, but that's something that cannot be guaranteed. Um, you know, the only way to guarantee it is the 90-day period, and that the town meeting, the special town meeting, is scheduled for a period outside the 90 days, so that we're safe. Um, it's, it's again, it's likely that the the town, the attorney general will help us out. They, then they use that word that we'll do what we can. I think we we reached out to them, and that's the information they gave us. But again, that's not a guarantee, so there is some risk. Uh, Mr. Tom Andrew, Mr. Feeney, have any comments? Uh, you know, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. I think. You know, this really does boil down to what the appetite for risk is. You know, based on what I've heard and the fact that we have been very diligent about reaching out in advance to all of the state entities who would be involved in this process and letting them know where we are and how things are progressing, I very much so do believe they would work with us. But I also understand, you know, these are, it's a fairly complicated review and it's a fairly new review to them that we'd be putting forth. So, again, I don't, I, you know, I agree that they would work with us and it wouldn't be likely a full 90 day period, but beyond that, what an acceptable risk is, I think we'd all be uh, really trying to guess at, you know, is it 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, 75 days, like, you know, what is sufficient time for that process to play out? And I'm not sure. Any of us have a, a very clear and firm grasp yet, or other scenarios or experiences to point back to from other communities as to exactly how quickly this may uh, transpire. So, you know, to sum it up, it could be done more quickly than 90 days, but I'm not sure we're in a position to say that, you know, perhaps 60 days is a safe number or not. Yeah, we just don't know. Uh, do either of you um, have any? Uh, I, uh, in response to uh, Mrs. Mahan's question about an, an embedded special that you know would allow us to close out, um, like a special for MBD Music, and close that out and just get that more to to the state more quickly. If I, if I may, Mr. Chair, please. I don't think there's anything that precludes that option. I would have to. I want to look at it more closely to provide a firm answer. Mm -hmm. But I think that that if. I think you mentioned that the 23rd of October was the date that Ms. Ricker looked at as, as the date that she'd probably be ready to go. Ready, ready to start with MBT communities, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's a preclusion to that, but I'd want to check yeah. and confirm that, Mrs. Mahan. And I think, and would we, if we, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, we would have to decide that now. Like we could call the special for earlier and then in a subsequent meeting, you know, maybe I'd have to call one in time. You know, we could, we could also declare a special in time for the warrants to be. That would be an option for the board as long as that is permitted, correct? Yeah, as long as that's permitted, okay, yeah. Um, I think the other thing, um, Mrs. Mahan's question about um, October is the other limiting factor of starting in much earlier is just the readiness um, for MBT communities, so. Mr. Dickinson, well, I, I had that question too. That we could embed and then, and then send it out, you know, once once we're done with it, and so it would come in after, you know, the 90-day, you know, max, mean, but uh, but well, or within that frame, but but still, it would give more time. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, we are doing so much work with the state be, that that be, I think be, be, just I, I just don't think there'll be that much more to review, you know, uh, and, and we can get a, a yes or no pretty quickly. But when you said if they don't accept it, we could then have another town meeting, <laughs> I mean, would the clock then start again when we finish the town meeting and then there'd be another 90 days? I mean, because, I mean, what would, yeah. if we're, you understand what I'm getting at? Is that really a possibility? Yeah, it's, it's highly, highly hypothetical. Okay, fine, fine. Um, fine. So, yeah, I, I think actually you raise, it, you know, raise a point that the AG re review is still what it is, and, you yeah. know, they have 90 days if they want it. So Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, 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 and just um, think. I'm sorry. I think Attorney Cunningham oh, okay. has a better answer probably. Yeah. And thank you, Mr. Chair, yeah. Mr. Mr. Diggins. And hopefully some of those issues might be headed off by the, uh, the I think, Ms. Ricker seeking pre-approval yeah. of the MBTA community's uh, plan. And then I think, but I think the timing of her, she's talked about the, uh, you know, the 
Warren Arkell hearings not being done in time, and she's looking at really the 23rd of October as the earliest that a special town meeting could address that particular the MBTA community's bylaw. Um, I don't think she's uh, on a timeline that could, based on what I've what been reported, uh, she'd be able to deal with it prior to that. But you're right. Uh, it, it's it's something that hopefully the pre-approval process will help head off any rejection uh, in 90 days or otherwise from mm -hmm. the Attorney General's office. Well, I'll just say, you know, doing it in October just stresses me out. Just the thought of it stresses me out. And, and, and I mean, a lot of times I have choices to make. I mean, and, and, and one of them I breathe much more easily than the other one, and that's the one that I go with, you know. And, and, and I mean, not only is it I mean, because of the election, I me mean, and I'm thinking about the clerk, I me, mean, but it's more so it is prop two and a half, you know. And, and, and it isn't that the people I mean, won't participate, you know, in town meeting. It's more that we're going to try and do it all, and 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 I'm just a, I'm a mess. I mean, the day after town meeting, because I'm just exhausted. You know, and so I just kind of grind through. I mean, the day after town meeting, and 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 we're going to want to be doing things. I mean, I think. I mean, prop two and a half is just the most important thing. You know, um, coming up. I mean, we we need we got to have that done. I mean, the communities act is important too. Very important. Um, fossil fuels down pilot is very important, but. Prop two and a half is paramount. You know, I, mean, I, don't, I don't want us to be in a position where we regret it, that we didn't do more because we were focused on other things. I mean, I think we can do, tell me, do focus on that, focus on prop two and a half, then start um, town meeting. I think we're, it's a risk I'm willing to take, you know, uh, uh, and, 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 and so, because the deal is that we're going to, Chances are we're going to get MBT communities you know, done, you know, and, and, and then it's really a matter of whether the town, the AG is willing to work with us. I mean, I know I mean, they may have other things on their plate and they're going to have holidays too, you know, but whether they can work with us in order to um, make, the, make the, the deadline that has been put in place uh, by, by the state. Uh, another thing I want to add too is that hey, we try to do precinct meetings before town meeting. You know, and and I think you know, if we do it earlier, that's going to pull that up in the schedule you know, and, and make, make it harder uh, to do that. And, but I think it'd be really good to do the precinct meetings because that would allow us to discuss MBT, MBT communities, you know, and depending on timing of the precinct meetings, also the, the override, you know, but, but just, I think, let's, let's just make sure that we have a, a, a to put ourselves in a good position, you know, for the override. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and, and I understand Mr. Diggins' concerns with timing in terms of what you do, but the way you laid it out, Mr. Chairman, um, I look at October as, as the, the, the preferable time for the uh, – for the special town meeting for a number of reasons. And, and I think if we do wait until November, we can't start before the 13th. The, the Thanksgiving is really a Thanksgiving week holiday now. It's not really Thanksgiving day. And, and so you really lose the Monday too. You're gonna to lose a lot of town meeting members um, that week as well. And then you're really bumping up against a, a deadline of February 11th. Um, so it, it, as I look at it, it, there are going to be hearings that are taking place in September. There's going to be feedback. It's not ideal, but for me, um, I think a mid-October special town meeting is, is, is preferable. And to uh, Mrs. Mahan's point to this, this whole Tuesday, Thursday thing versus Monday, Wednesday, I mean, you know, I suppose we could start on the 18th and only go one day that week, um, and, and maybe that provides some incentive to town meeting that you basically have five dates. and. and that extra day, maybe the week of October 30th. So maybe you go an extra day that week to, to, to finish up. But it, it just seems to me fitting this in and, and getting the request for approval, it, while there are concerns, October just seems to work better at this, as far as I see it. Mr. Hurd? Yeah, I think, I mean, I hear all concerns. I think when in doubt, be early and give yourself time. 
So I think October sounds more preferable to me. Um, and I don't have strong feelings on it because starting September 6th, I'm busy every night until April. Um, so certainly my schedule wouldn't affect whether we do it in October or November, but I know that's different for for different individuals. And But just when it comes to deadlines, it's Murphy's Law. You, hmm. you start as early as you can and you finish up as early as you can and you deal for it with any issues that come up in between. So I think I am leaning more towards the October start. I'm, I'm still 98% at starting on uh, Wednesday, October 18th with the November 11th deadline uh, with the question of can we have an embedded um, special town meeting as well as um, I'm hoping by, well, we have the uh, patrolman's contract um, which needs to be voted by special town meeting uh, and they've been three years in the town also has been negotiating three years for that hopefully hoping by then the ranking officers will also have that and then we'll have a clean sweep so um, but I, I do want to hear from the chair because if, if I right now sort of echoing uh, Mr. DeCourcy and um, Mr. Hurd's remarks. Um, it's a special, it's the override on November 7th, mm -hmm. it's Thanksgiving week, December, forget it, and, and if we have a light winter again, we're lucky, but we may not. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still looking towards, and, but we'll wait and see if someone else makes a motion, I'd be willing to make a motion, but I'm looking around October 18th, but I'd like to hear what the chair or anyone else has to say. Th thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, my recommendation, and my preference, I should say, is, is actually, even though we're not used to doing a town meeting on any other night than Monday or Wednesday, the only time we're required to do that is it's the start of annual town meeting, when the bylaws say it has to be on a Monday. Um, I would feel better about having the potential for two nights um, that week, and which would be starting the 17th and, and maybe doing the 19th. Uh, which isn't to say town meeting could, you know, if someone makes the motion you know, to to start bunching up meetings, you know, we could we could just town meeting could decide to come in on a Saturday. I mean, there's a lot of ways we could do this, um, but um, I, you know, I think I know the, one thing the moderator said to me and the clerk as well is that uh, we could do town meeting two nights in a row um, one of these weeks. Um, it allows a little bit less time to process a motion, uh, amendments and substitute motions and things like that. So um, having that space is helpful administratively, but none of this is set in stone. Everyone I talked to said they will work with whatever we want to do. Um, if I, you know, if, I'm not going to make the motion because the chair typically doesn't. I would, I would move for the 17th. Um, so, so would we be aiming to be done in by, I mean, November 1st? I mean, yes, that, that would be the idea. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, all right. If I, so, it, I'm not going to win this one. Yeah, and I'll probably, I'll probably vote. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to vote. You know, it doesn't really matter uh, at this point. But I will say that yeah, I just don't like rushing town meeting. Yeah, I don't like town meeting feeling rushed. Yeah, now, you can say that's going to cut both ways. Yeah, it'll cut if we're trying to be done you know, before the election. It, it will cut that way because people just want to be done, you know, as early in the summer as possible. Uh, but, but, um, yeah, the, uh, I'm exhausted just thinking. <laughs> you know, uh, no. I mean, one, uh, one thing that I have thought about going through this planning process is this is very much in the hands of town meeting. You know, how they, they can determine debate earlier or later. They can, uh, Accept or reject the, the default motion about when to reconvene. You know, there's. I think the town meeting has a, has a substantial degree of control over how compressed it ends up being and how much it's rushed or not. Um, and you know, my looking at both of these scenarios, I do favor October. Um, I could see it cutting either way in, in unpredictable ways in terms of uh, the effect of the quality of town meeting. So I, I kind of with Mr. Hurd on the. Uh, on the, if it's a deadline, let's air towards getting it done sooner. But I, I, I appreciate, I think there's arguments to be made for November too. Good ones. Yeah. 
Yes, this one last question. Um, did you um, get any feedback, have any thoughts? If not, I'd say maybe September 11th in terms of the one day that we open and close the warrant? Um, I think there was n nobody had strong feelings about that. I think we, if we decide when we're going to start time meeting, we work back from that for the warrant. Then, yeah. um, so I guess in, in pick because we, am I correct, we also have to pick that date tonight? We should, yeah. yeah. And um, it's whether, um, I, I know our next meeting is September 11th. I think our meeting after that's the 20th. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't said it yet. Yeah. Oh, we haven't said it yet. Okay. So um, for opening and closing the warrant on the same day, do we want to look at the week of September 11th? Do we want to do it on September 11th? Do we want to do it on Wednesday, September 13th? I'm thinking, but yeah, or what you, the chair would say, or anyone else. Yeah, uh, attorney, do you have any advice about about timing issues with the warrant? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, all those would be fine. I think those dates uh, you have to, as you know, you have to provide five days before opening the warrant, five days notice. Uh, then you have to leave the warrant open for a minimum of one day, mm -hmm. and then you have to have 14 days minimum before you have the town meeting, the special town meeting. So those those are the parameters. Um, so a September 11th date, if you're looking at a October 17th special town meeting date all those would if you looked at you know if you set it right there at the, around that time frame you'd probably be good and uh, I'll ask our board administrator Ms. Mar too if there are any anything you flagged about the mailing of the warrant and the operational ends of this that concern you with this discussion the earlier the better <laughs> as soon as I have the date I'll reach out to the printer and kind of see a timeline on his behalf I would say <coughs> yeah the sooner the better yeah. <laughs> so, question to my colleagues. I mean, do you all think that the, the way town meeting goes in terms of just the, the discussion of the issues and the nature of the deliberation could have an effect on the mood of the town with respect to the override, or is that something? Did you that, see that, the, the mood? The mood. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, or is that just something we should just go, no, we can't think about that. That's just whatever it is, we just deal with it. I would say you're talking 252 town meeting members, most of which are pretty much involved and know where they'll stand on the override on November 7th. Um, uh, we, no disrespect, we won't count department heads, which is another 20 or 30. But um, in terms of the mood, I think we're talking 252 if everybody shows up. I think they'd appreciate um, the earlier versus bunching everything up, suspending or starting mid-November going into December, then I think we'd have a cranky town meeting and lower attendance than we would um, with the October. And to your question about the override, of those 252 town meeting members, 75% of them are probably, I would anticipate, are, are plugged in, are going to be plugged into the override. And um, a majority of them have done these exclusion overrides in the past, so we know what work needs to happen on those weeks and, and things like that. So um, it may be uh, 20, 30 people that can't make phone calls four nights, but then I would say to them, find someone else to take your spot to make those phone calls. But And we have the chair is one of the three, the triad, the trinity um, <laughs> of the Invest in Arlington the Holy trinity. November 7th yes. override. So are, are we a point to make a motion? Well, well, sorry. No, but my question is really geared more towards me, residents, as opposed to town meeting members. Me, so it's even, and it's just that me. It seems like residents, me, are kind of engaged on the MBT communities issue. Me, you know, so I was just wondering. So that was the point of my question, not so much the, the town meeting members. I agree with you on that one. So, so that's it. But, but I think we're ready to move on. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I mean, I've talked about this with, some, with different stakeholders, and I think. No one, no one I've talked to has a, has a strong opinion because it could go both ways. You know, I think you'd also ask if we do um, the, the override vote first, you know, what effect does that have on these communities? And it's, it's, it's hard to tell, yeah. you know. But yeah, I kind of agree with Mrs. Mahan that I think people, this crowd probably knows where they're at. So um, does anyone feel like making a motion? Mrs. Mahan. I would like to make a motion that the Arlington Select Board 
Hereby call a special meeting on Tuesday, October 16th, 2023 at Arlington Town Hall and further that the warrant for such meeting shall open at 8 a.m. on Monday, September 11th, 2023 uh, and close the same day, Monday, September 11th, 2023 at 4 p.m. And uh, Ms. Mond, did, or did you intend to say uh, Tuesday the 17th? I did. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we got it. See, I get so many dates written. That was, that was, so I, we, I meant to we've say. We've come to rely on Mrs. Mahat for the articulation. The and I messed it up. Tuesday Sorry. the 17th. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, on a motion by Mrs. Mahat, a second of it. Mr. Hurd, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. So it is a 4 1 vote. All right. And the chair will energy. follow up with the manager and town council about yes, the yeah, we, question. Yes, yeah, about, about the possibility of embedded questions. Anybody else's question. Yeah, and I think that that will be kind of a tactical um, question with timing that will become more clear in the next few days. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Th I want to thank, thank all of my colleagues for the very careful dis consideration and, um, and to the t t multiple town staff who have been helping me do this research and, and have worked really hard on this. So um, I think... Once again, it's just a demonstration of, of the value that we get out of our, of our professional staff in town, um, as led by our department heads and the town manager. Okay, item 20, future select board meetings. So as was recently observed, our, we have one for September the 11th. Um, and I also want to bring up the question uh, for uh, when we want to do the town manager's goals session. So I think I'll put that in the mix. Um, and I'll toss that particular question to Mr. Feeney, because we've had some discussion today about that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think, you know, my position on the future uh, goal setting meeting is, you know, I think that any time mid to late September would work. Uh, still mapping out a transition period for bringing uh, the new deputy town manager for operations, Christine Bongiorno, on board. And it would be my intention to hopefully bring uh, both of the deputies with myself to that uh, goal setting session so that we could all uh, be on the same page from the beginning. Um, thank you, Mr. Domanger. So we've got Tuesday the 11th. Would, uh, it, for our regular uh, select board meeting, would the 25th work out for people? Jewish I think that's the app before. I'm sorry? It's Jewish Holy Day. Day. Yeah. So it does not, yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's why we didn't pick Oh, yeah, up. that's why we have, they have that on the uh, calendar. I should look at my own materials. All right, so any recommendations for our second meeting in September? 27th. Looks good. Yeah. Okay, set, let's set, set that the for, the, yeah. for the 27th. Thank you. I have this Justin Pierce's birthday, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is, that is a significant holiday. <laughs> For our former school know, committee. How are these birthdays? I have Mike Champa's birthday in October that pops up. I'm like, how did he get in there? I think it's safe to say that um, the most awkward uh, coincidence of a birthday this year is on Town Day. Uh, the third chair of the select board might be celebrating age 58 on that day. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. What about October? So now we have a town meeting schedule to consider. We have a holiday on the 9th, but if we went two weeks... What do you think, folks? Um, 11th? Yeah, something that works. I mean, I have a TAC meeting, but yeah. I'll just have to let it go. Yeah, uh, uh, but that's the only day I think that's going to really work. Man. All right. 11th? Do you anticipate, in terms of warrant auto coherence, the revolving fund? That's a select board warrant auto coherence. Is there anything else? Um, the Patrolman's contract that's FinCom or is, or is that joint FinCom select board as well as are there any how many uh, warrant article hearings are we going to be Mr. Corsi opines that there's just FinCom, FinCom for the uh, court department Marine. so we don't do that but revolving fund we do right and do we do revolving funds no I don't think so no. we, we would for the fossil fuel free bylaw program that's ours correct yeah okay so that's the only one. So we'd have one. Yeah, so we will have to be cognizant of that, though. Um, okay, I'll leave that to the chair. Yeah, exactly. And, and if I could, too, um, if I, uh, to get, for scheduling the goals meeting, I'd, um, I want to check in my personal schedule for late September on that. But um, we can do that informally, and I'll, I'll be in touch with everybody to get that scheduled over the next few days. Would the 18th work for folks for that? For, eight, for 18th, for, for the goals? 
for the, for for the goals, goals study of, of September? Yeah. Um, I might be a way that we can get it. Yes, can I, um, yeah. I promise I will do it tomorrow, Mr. Chair, that I will email you. My husband typically goes, has something. Yeah, that would make it difficult for me. So I'll yeah, and, and, and that might be a, a I, I might be a week on my way that uh, that week. I'm I'll know in the next few days. So, but I'll do that um, tomorrow. I promise. All right. So we've got um, so Ms. Martin, bring us up to date where we are with with settled meetings. We I, have the, I have nine twenty seven and a tentative of ten eleven. Is that correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then then we head into special town meetings. So right. I think we're going to be doing meetings. You know, our our business before. Yeah, before those to take us through October. Do we want to go any farther? Do, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Um, oh, I said so. Um, you know, we can go back to like the. We can go back to yeah. So on, so after October the 11th, you know, we'll have. 10, we'll, we'll need to do like one hour meetings before town meeting. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to schedule a regular one for the 23rd or? Mm -hmm. For our, in October. So we'd be in town I know meeting. No, we'll still be in town meeting, but. Yeah. I mean, we can always start earlier. If that yeah, okay. That, yeah, that makes sense. But that's up to, the, obviously, the board, whatever. Yeah, oh, no, as to that, yeah. I'm just, okay. All right. 10, 23. Yeah, yeah, just so those are on the calendar. You know, and if we have more to do, you know, we can do short meetings before that. Okay. Do we want to go any further or into November? Or if we could. Yeah, then. please. All right, so how's November 6th look? Well, that's right before Election Day, but be that as it may. All right, what are we going to, are we going to do after the election? I don't, whatever the um, board, I mean, I don't, we typically don't have a lot to do for. Okay, so six, eight. Yeah, okay, look at the six, then what about the 20th? Uh, that is Thanksgiving week. I'll, I'll be here. Right. Six and 20? Okay, six and 20. All right, that's good. Mm -hmm. You want to stop there? Um, so Jim, do, do, yes. do we want to notice a, a, a meeting on... October 17th, like earlier that night, or? Yeah, let's do that just in case we need it for, you know, an hour before. All right. Does anyone want to go into December? Or want to stop where we're at? Um, we can go into December. Oh, was that Mr. I said we, I'm fine with going into December. I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, so what's the latest one in November, Ms. Ms. Miller? Um, the last one we had was 1120. All right. Okay. 12, 4, yep. 18. Yeah. How's that? The 4th and the 18th in December. If that works for yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And I can send out the schedule. If Please that's do. Helpful yes. For yes. Me. Thank you. Yes. Short meeting on the 18th. That's usually just license. Yes, right? indeed. For mm -hmm. tradition. Very good. Please note that in your. Uh, yeah. Short meeting, all right. <laughs> Remind me. I will. So I keep it that way. All right. I think that concludes future select board meetings. We have item 21, correspondence received. Concerns regarding a do not enter signs along Lake Street, Wilson Avenue, Little John Street, Homestead Road, by Professor Brown and Mary Street. And number 22, concerns regarding a signage on Grafton Street from Lonnie Scott at 12 Grafton Street. Turn to the board for comments and motions. I'll move motion received, but I'm going to suggest that we direct them to the town manager um, rather than sending them to TAC, and then we can, if you want, can have a discussion about whether it goes to TAC afterwards. Okay. Second. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any further discussion, correspondence received? Uh, motion from Mr. Diggins, seconded by Ms. Is Mrs. Mahan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five, nothing to vote. Board and staff announcements. All right. Um, Ms. Marr. No board and staff announcements, thank you. Attorney Cunningham. No announcements, thank you. Mr. Feeney. Uh, Mr. Chair, if the board would indulge, I would like to use the staff announcements to make a few staff announcements. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely appropriate, I'd say. So I first would want to recognize the recently retired uh, Vinnie Kilcommons. He served in the engineering division for over 50 years, which is a tenure we just don't see and likely may not see for decades to come with our employees. He retired on July 28th, uh, had a nice send-off farm, and he got the customary DPW uh, 
street sign with his last name on it. It, it was a great celebration. I just wanted to take a moment to publicly thank uh, Vinny for his service. But also, again, if the board will indulge me, to take a few minutes to announce and welcome slash introduce some of the new hires we've made in the past few weeks. So we've hired uh, Ashi Bayram in the treasurer's office as an assistant collector of excise. We've welcomed Eric Tai to the library as a library assistant. Uh, Lori Kenshaft, who many of you know, is joining the planning department as an energy advocate in the uh, Electrify Arlington campaign to help people move forward with heat pumps. Uh, both Ellie Bartholomew and Ellen Contini have been promoted from uh, different existing positions within the kid care program to become co-directors. Uh, Ellie will be on the operations side and Ellen will be on the curriculum side and that's sort of the preschool but mainly the after school programs run through our recreation department. Uh, pleased to report that Wolfgang Kierstein is joining uh, engineering as a new civil engineer. Uh, we've been understaffed for some time, so this is uh, an important hire with keeping many of our roadway projects on track. Uh, Jamie Lammy has been hired as the Fox Children's Librarian. Uh, Tara Arsenault, uh, who uh, Attorney Cunningham knows, is moving over from the Youth Counseling Center records clerk position to becoming the assistant claims coordinator uh, in the legal department. Uh, also, uh, Lauren Healy was offered and accepted the position of office manager with the facilities department. Uh, obviously a very uh, critical position serving both the town and the schools and she will be starting uh, a little bit later this month. Uh, as of today, we uh, if made an offer and it was accepted by Katie Luzet to serve as the town's next economic development coordinator. Uh, and finally, as I shared with the board uh, offline that, you know, Christine Bongiorno has accepted the position as Arlington's next uh, deputy town manager for operations. So thank you for that. I know that was a long list with, you know. And you. And myself. <laughs> recent hire. Yeah, recent start date. So, uh, you know. Welcome to all these new employees to the organization. Just wanted their uh, sort of names to be out there and let them know we're thrilled that they're joining the team. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. I think that is a wonderful reminder of the richness we have in our staff, and that is really the bottom line, you know, for the services we deliver to residents. So thank you for taking the time. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please note I haven't had board and staff announcements for a while, and I want to thank the town manager for keeping us surprised of the new hires as well as Vin's retirement. Um, I did see on uh, the Facebook page for Arlington, DP, Arlington Massachusetts DPW, DPW, there's five to seven really good pictures of the party that Mr. Feeney and others and Mr. Rademacher had uh, along with his, his green and white sign. So <clears throat> we can definitely take advantage and look at that. Um, two um, board announcements. Uh, the first one I talked about earlier uh, about the LWIFE CSO issue, um, I am going to have a conversation uh, with the town manager tomorrow recognizing that he's, you know, really new to this uh, in the sense of being in the town manager role. But I do want to follow up that uh, the EPA comment period is open right now um, regarding uh, the CSO's one Somerville and three or four at Cambridge. Um, and I had asked the previous, previous town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, and the previous town manager, Mr. Pooler, um, if we were combining a team, which possibly could also include the DPW director, to submit comments on behalf of the town of Arlington. I used to always do it, uh, you know, 20, 25 years ago by myself, and then Clarissa Rowe, when she was on the board, she joined, joined with me. Um, but Arling, uh, Cambridge, Somerville, and Belmont have their team set and have been involved in the process um, with the EPA, with the MWRA, around <coughs> the, the CSO project. As I noted right now, the EPA um, comment period is open, and I do know that, um, I can't even find when I wrote it down, that Save the Alwife. Um, and other neighborhood groups uh, are submitting 
uh, comments to the EPA uh, re regarding the CSOs, and one of them is, um, I want to say this right, she sent it to me, here it is. Um, they are asking the town's assistance with anything that can be done regarding their request to the EPA that they're submitting regarding a real-time system with colored lights. Uh, it's similar to what um, they have at Boston's Potomac River when sewage goes into a pedestrian bikeway. The lights go off and there are signs that let people know. And if you go onto the Arlington List or Kristen Anderson's Facebook page, she has live video of people at this past storm um, where previously when there were CSO discharges, somehow the town would get the notice out. We haven't been doing that, so we need to, um, perhaps Ms. Bongiorno can give us a, a little bit of advice on that. But um, I'll have further conversations regarding what the town is doing and are we prepared to submit comments? I know Attorney Heim and uh, Town Manager Chapterlane and then Pooler also said um, that we supposedly have outside council, environmental council, that is also working on these comments. Because the variance in the MWRA, the EPA, and the CSO comment period only comes up once every 10 years. So this is our shot. And I, honest to goodness, you can ask my poor colleagues who have had to listen to this. I've been talking about this for going on two years now. So I'm just concerned that I'd like to see what it is we're doing. And I, I will follow up with the town manager. But I will say if um, the town manager or if my colleagues have any other ideas that um, the DCR Greenway, which is Boulevard Road, it's a pedestrian pathway, it's a bicyclist, it's a baby stroller, all that flooded with sewage, E. coli, gaga, as they say in Sicilian, um, and there's pictures of that. And there's video that you can see, um, whether they're Arlington residents or not, you can see one gentleman with the baby in the, in the stroller going through it. And David Stoff was down there telling people, you're going through E. coli. You, you could get very, very sick after this. And nobody has any idea. You know, I mean, some people, some of the adults I saw going through on bicycles reminded me when I was like 10, 11 years old when you'd see a big puddle, so you'd get, get speed going so you can really go through that. Um, but there's really no notice down there. Um, and again, it's the town of Arlington has the least culpability, but I think there should be something there. Um, I think we should join in uh, Save the Al White Brooks request to the EPA about similar to Potomac River, having those flashing lights that would be an EPA DCR project that they would have to pay for that do go off, but as well as signage, but perhaps you could talk to the Board of Health. Is there anything Arlington can do just in the interim to, to just say um, this area subject to sewage overflows because a lot of people don't know what CSOs are or something like that or, or health risk and then the second piece of new business and if any of my colleagues have any ideas please get them to Mr. Feeney um, I've never seen an, an event at, at the res where and I did not know that we have a crowd capacity for the recreation department um, I know one of the beer gardens um, that became an issue and um, I'm not expecting an answer tonight unless it's a quick one that you have. But I was just curious, um, and I'm thrilled that the Bear Gardens up at the uh, Arlington Reservoir off of Lowell Street in the Heights are very, very successful. But I know at one point um, there was an issue regarding attendees. And I'm just wondering um, when there's a crowd maximum number, is that number of people or is that effect on the neighborhood? Because I got a sense from other people the one time where we sort of had to, and I wasn't there, so I don't know this firsthand. Is, is there any few sentences you give? People were saying to me, it wasn't the number of people, it was the number of cars parking both sides on these small streets in the neighborhood, fire trucks, police trucks, I mean fire trucks, emergency vehicles couldn't get through, and that's what, what the closing was. Is that something you, you can answer real quickly or you want to get back to us on that? If, if I could, I think what I would say is I'm not necessarily aware of what may have transpired 
out in the neighborhood, but the limit and capacity on the number of people was being calculated and dictated by both swimming area and beach space. So the, the formula that we were using was based on uh, the actual asset itself and how many people could be <clears throat> can, you know, reasonably contained within that area and still be appropriately monitored, monitored and supervised. Okay, so if you could just look into it, I probably had five or six neighbors who said the town stopped letting cars come in and come in our neighborhoods because it was unsafe because of the parking issue and emergency vehicles not being able to get through. If you could look into if that was an issue um, and if that also was a response to it or if that they were just neighbors were maybe just anecdotally surmising, oh, that's why I got shut down because it's so crowded on my neighborhood street here. You couldn't get an emergency vehicle through. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Any announcements? No announcements. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to say it was very sad over the weekend to hear that uh, Rick Fenton, who was a member of the Council on Aging, passed away last week. Um, he was a six-year member of the Council on Aging, and then for the past three years, he's been an associate member. Um, he also was a volunteer financial consultant to the Council on Aging, and he would take calls, meet people in person, and, and uh, just provide a lot of good answers and advice to people. We had named him in March of 2022 to the Elderly and Disabled Tax Relief Committee, and that, that the last time I actually spoke to Rick was in in June, and he had been working on um, concerns with the tax deferral program in its relationship to the senior circuit breaker, and talked to the town manager today, and, and we're going to um, discuss that with our legislative delegation, those concerns that, 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 that Rick had mentioned. But I want to send condolences to his wife, Tony, and, um, and just, just recognize that, that the number of years and the number of hours that Rick had uh, volunteer to the town is a very valuable member to the Council on Aging. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. Diggins. Thanks. And I will follow up on this at our next meeting, but I am so happy to hear that the, we have a couple of donated AEDs me that were installed mean at um, Thorndike Field and um, at Buckfield. You know, so, so I know people, <laughs> when you really need an AED, you want it there, you know, and, and so, so it's really, I, mean, I was glad to, to read that. So, so um, I, don't, I guess I could find out who made the donation, but because I could learn more, but I'm just happy that that um, you installed them there at those two places. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, my announcement is an invitation to the community and to my fellow board members uh, to uh, have an event to meet and greet and welcome our new town manager on September the 14th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. in the Town Hall Gardens. I, uh, the announcement promises light refreshments, so um, I hope that many people can turn out and, and warmly welcome our new town manager at that time. And with that, I think we have conducted our business. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. To adjourn. Second. So we have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.